Welcome to Lorehammer. My name is James, and here is my co-host, Schultze. Hello. Uh, today we have two new guests in with us today. Hey, James! What did we say about stealing our podcast? Do it. Oh my god. <laughs> I gave him written permission. S- scratch that. Welcome to Lorehammer. Oh, my name is Eric. Down. Oh wow, that was that was violent. straight savage right there. I don't know whose side I should be on. Mark. Because on the one hand, I hate Eric. Yes. On the other hand, I don't want you two to commandeer my podcast. My podcast. Your podcast. My podcast, yes. Mark, what have I said? Welcome to Lorehammer. My name is Mark, the first and primary hopes. <laughs> to my left, we got Eric. In front of me, we got James. And then to my right, we got Nathan. We did it. That's Intro true. is complete. Those all are right, all so directions. way to take up my, into- <laughs> my entire purpose on this podcast. <laughs> that was all I was good for. <laughs> um, welcome to Lorehammer. You've already got a taste of what we offer. Oh, God. Which is nothing good. And uh, everything terrible and what's wrong with the world. Oh. Joining us today, obviously, is James. Everyone has met him. Everyone has met me. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but for the first time, we actually have a new guest on, uh, Nathan, uh, or Schultze, as sometimes he is referred to. By James, mostly. Yeah. Is there a story about that nickname? or I thought it was his last name. I always assumed. Uh, it is. There we go. That's, That's something that I would want be the-, the whole <laughs> internet to know. Thanks for that. <laughs> right? So, let's give out his address yeah. next. <laughs> I happen to know his sin, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh good that's yeah. perfect. anyone four, know his four, credit card one, five eight seven nine Any? three two that's that his no he lives <laughs> actually you you always know that someone's sin based on where they live okay, like post, if i'm canadian i'll have a canadian sin number. no like based on like where you live your sin number is different like everyone in alberta their sin starts with a six Okay, so you know one of ten numbers. Nine numbers. <laughs> you don't, actually. Well, you're. Uh, I'm pretty sure yours is a four. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. That's uh, pretty good. Um, do you know the rest? No. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> of your own social insurance number? Locked up there. <laughs> um, so, welcome to Lorehammer, a podcast about... Warhammer 40k, maybe. And sin numbers, apparently. apparently yeah. Specifically and my fraud. Sin <laughs> also, we do some light fraud here. Light fraud <laughs> uh, speaking of fraud, let's talk about Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Give us your money. Yeah. We'll be good with it. Um, we have no new patrons since our last recording, but hey, if you'd like to hear us uh, attempt to pronounce and potentially butcher your name, feel free to go on patreon and give us a dollar a month so um we can afford people like nathan this is true i I won't go into my hourly rates but i'm not i'm not cheap yeah i'm also 100k a year (laughs) you're what practically (laughs) naked right now well yeah we didn't pay for him to be clothed no no (laughs) that's an additional charge don't worry (laughs) the tassels are a nice touch though (laughs) i thought so it's for you guys, so yeah. <laughs> not me. Well, it helps my confidence, but <laughs> uh-huh. he's, got t- he's got tiny nipples. That's why. <laughs> well, I don't like to talk about it. But... That's why they're covered by the tats. <laughs> yeah. How yes. did you betray his confidence? I can't believe like you did that. that to me. We were at the pool. I noticed it just got logged away. <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, I have something i want to share with you guys before we actually step into our episode today which is about tyranid biomorphs um you're gonna share about tyranid you biomorphs? are a tyranid biomorph i wish your beard is a tyranid biomorph? <laughs> definitely yes it's a symbiote <laughs> symbiote um no did you guys know that there is a parasite that exists that uh, destroys the tongue of a fish and then replaces its tongue with its own body <laughs> no. All right, I'll read this guy's too. The isopod Simothoa exigua is pretty much the creepiest creature ever. It enters a fish through its gills and attaches to its tongue. From there, it severs the blood vessels connecting to the tongue, which causes it to fall off, mm-hmm. and attaches itself to the stub that's left, taking over the food consumption from that point forward. <laughs> 
So then does the fish die? No, it continues to live. It just leeches some of the... Some food? Yeah, okay. enough to live. That's like, have you heard of like the zombie ants and the fungus that takes over ants? Yes. That's just wild. Yeah. There's also the, the spider that kills its, like, kills little insects and eats them and then attaches their corpses to its body <laughs> as, like, a weird a trophy. Spider. Perfect. Yeah, it's really messed up, actually. <laughs> like, you look at its body and you can see, like, all the twisted, like, limbs of, like, the small creatures it's eaten. So I just wanted you guys to know. <laughs> the world is full, full of horrors. today we are talking about tyranid biomorphs. And biomorphs are these little organisms that exist on top of more complex tyranid organisms. And just like the tongue of the, let me go back to that page, of the Cymothoa exigua, <laughs> there are many, many different organisms of the tyranid race that mutually coexist beneficially symbiotically how, does how many that more words fish benefit from this uh i have no tongue idea loss. Yeah, i don't think it does at all <laughs> it doesn't lose its tongue i suppose so, so you chose tongue, a terrible tongue. example is what you're telling <laughs> yeah. i just found this and i thought that was wild <laughs> guys it literally what did you google to find that crazy uh, facts oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay and then it just happened to fit really well uh, yeah, but today's episode is all about tyranid uh, biomorphs, and there are a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, before we get into it, we, when we were doing our research and, and choosing which ones to go, we did actively choose. We did. We didn't just pick everything, and sometimes we thought some were so like others that we just mushed them together, so... Yeah, like a Venom Cannon and a Heavy Venom Cannon. cannon. Well, those are very different. One is regular and one is heavy. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. So, but that's exactly it. We didn't we didn't do everything individually. We kind of just went off the flavor of what you're supposed to be thinking about when we're discussing... Tyranids. I'd also like to point out James' rampant alcoholism. <laughs> um, it is 9.30 in the morning. We are recording this. It's actually 10.05, you, you liar. <laughs> <laughs> and it, you are uh, drinking alcohol. Yeah. I thought you were doing a drinking game. I was going but he hasn't said the words yet, so I'm just <laughs> well, that's right. started. That's the alcoholism kicking in. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, who doesn't have a little alcoholism I think everybody in the <laughs> room put your hands table. up yeah <laughs> all right one one person brought alcohol to this recording yeah <laughs> the other three did not <laughs> i brought some for you but i came you in brought, two you brought two beers <laughs> two there's four of us yeah share <laughs> oh, you guys can have one and all of the other <laughs> guys <laughs> all right. am i a dispenser a monster <laughs> an alcoholic <laughs> that's what you are <laughs> all right let's uh let's get into tyranid biomorphs um so the first thing we're going to talk about is uh yo mama <laughs> he's drunk already <laughs> yeah jeez <laughs> hey if you could just back off and let us record james Do you want that me would to just be... go to the other room <laughs> go hang I'll out with my parents there's upstairs. a closet right there it's take more your than alcohol <laughs> to the other room yeah. take it somewhere private so we don't have to witness your slow descent into debauchery <laughs> debauchery i've had a sip calm, calm that's yourself. enough yeah <laughs> that's all it takes that's, that's all, all it takes to <laughs> destroy lives <laughs> Have you never seen a mad commercial? <laughs> you insane person. Guys, Tyranids, please. Let's Wait. go to them ripping people apart. That's <laughs> way better. I'm way more comfortable talking about that. That awkward moment when you see the large space marine get torn in half by a Tyranid and you're like, oh, I guess I'm next. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you wet your um imperium given regiment pants. yeah you're just like oh oh katie no longer stands <laughs> shut your mouth <laughs> oh boy he but is drunk the <laughs> the planet fell before the guard did i can confirm that i've seen the memes <laughs> oh my god <laughs> okay let's talk about tyranids so um before we talk about their biomorphs we're going to talk about how adaptable and uh how they evolve and they're kind of two different things that we were talking about um yeah a lot of people use them synonymously yeah but they like adaptability versus evolution 
are actually two very different things. Yeah. I think we're going to probably mix those up multiple yeah, times. Yeah, we are going we to. We did do research but we at do, one point. We do know there is a difference. Don't email us. I mean, like, <laughs> oh, do you guys know that? They're, they're don't technically adapt. Mark also pronounced every word wrong. Yeah. We don't want to hear that bullshit. Yeah. Had enough of that. But adapted- We're sending him to lessons, okay? It's, <laughs> it's getting better. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. They're expensive. Yeah. Those lessons, too. <laughs> what word was that? Milk. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Ma- Milk. Uh, okay. <laughs> Adaptability works on the organism to better fit it to the needs of the environment. So that's like, you know, you're getting tan. You know, that's adaptability. If you stay out in the sun too long, you get tan, you're protected. Where an evolution works on a much slower scale on and on a genetic level. Tyranids do not adapt themselves. They are at the mercy of the hive mind in their initial creation. Okay. That is like one of our initial stances on this is that Tyranids do not change. Whatever they are initially created with, that is what they are stuck with until they die, which either is at the hands of a space marine or is by throwing themselves into the digestive pools. Those when, are the only two ways. Die. That's it. That's <laughs> it. That's the only way uh-huh. that they're going to die. But biomorphs are what we're going to talk about are actually these tiny organisms that symbiotically attach themselves to larger tyranid organisms in order to change the larger organism. So like a carnifex is just like a standard template thing. Like it's just a regular creature. And then all of a sudden you grow a, Mark, give me a, a what's a biomorph? That a is? heavy venom cannon. Okay, so you grow the the hive mind grows a heavy venom cannon, and this heavy venom cannon is actually its own organism, which then attaches itself to the Carnifex, and now the Carnifex is different. I have a question. <laughs> yeah, how come they're always holding them with their hands? Then they aren't always oh, holding them with their. A hands. A lot of them are holding. All the termagants are holding guns they but th- but they are not all always yeah, but you uh-huh. will notice that those things are like tubed into the tyranid sure right but yeah they're and holding them i was going to talk about this a little later but uh well i'm th- bringing it up now well yeah so uh, <laughs> i'll talk about it now there's been kind of two different uh thought processes from games workshop when it comes to biomorphs in older lore um they were just upgrades that you could put on things. Um, so the, if you toss on a gun, it wasn't necessarily an actual separate creature. Where in newer editions of the lore, all biomorphs are actually separate creatures. But you then, as we'll go into it, you run into the problem where they'd be like, um, claws and teeth are a biomorph, which means it's its own separate entity. Yeah. So you got a toothless gun that then gets the biomorph of teeth, which are separate entities. So there's this weird disconnect between... Yeah, they haven't fully what, updated everything to the new standard. Well, yeah, yeah, but that doesn't necessarily even make sense then because what what's the point of differentiating that it's a separate thing if it's just like teeth? Because I mean... But it's better teeth. Okay, but so they're taking out the teeth that are there? There was never teeth to begin with. Okay. Or, <laughs> but like, or, like it's, my it's, teeth or it's are, an organism, like a microorganism that actually attaches to your teeth and grows and proliferates until it just grows and extends out your teeth to make them better. Sure, sure but like even humans have symbiotic bacteria Absolutely. in your mouth. So is it, it's just... Uh, what's, your, what's your problem? I just don't understand. What's your major malfunction? I don't like that they're holding the guns. Oh. Well, it, well, that sounds like your own sensibilities. Um, so a good example is a lash whip. It is. It looks like a whip, but the body of the whip, like the handle, is actually a body of a separate organism. Yes, but sure. like, so he holds the body of a separate organism. The lash whip actually controls itself. So like, it lunges out at people and does its own thing. It, I just picture like him holding the whip and it's just like whoop. Yeah, and it'll just do whatever it wants. Jumping out it, yeah. So then why Um, does he even need to hold it? Why can't... Because it can't do anything on its own. 
Just like wow. stick it to your leg and, and let it just can. jump at you. Yeah. People. Yeah, but it like <laughs> you are the one that moves it, right? Like it's lashing out, but you're moving it from point A to point B on the battlefield. You're bringing it close to end. If enemies. it can lash out, it can snake itself along, I would assume. <laughs> but it's it's gonna be better effective when it's used by someone who also is holding so a like, sword. So when like something <laughs> just that derail has, this whole thing has like a lash hard. whip <laughs> dies, can the lash whip still kill people no, and like no. snake around the battlefield and I do don't, its own thing? I don't think why not so yeah. okay first of all i didn't write tyranid lore you dumb bitch yeah <laughs> let's get that straight right now i had no control over this second of all suspend some disbelief okay gentlemen <laughs> i can't we won't can't do it oh my god how dare you this is gonna be a long ass episode to do that <laughs> it's gonna be we've got through what one line we've of your <laughs> one line of eight pages <laughs> We have eight pages, gentlemen. I got nowhere else to be. No, we got a game to play after this. We do. Right, we have tournament prep. We'll talk about that at the end. That could be fun. Yeah. Mm. Okay. The gong Ooh, show. But next, is. so <laughs> the, the current status of biomorphs <laughs> is that they are symbiotic <coughs> organisms that attach themselves to larger, more complex things. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so the Tyranids have shown themselves to be incredibly adaptable. And this is the hive mind adapting and creating different biomorphs for its standard template constructs. STCs. That's right. <laughs> uh, from its <laughs> first official contact with the Imperium in 741 M41 to the current date, which is around early M42, the Tyranid race has grown and changed drastically. So it's been maybe 500 years yeah four to 500 years yeah not a long time for sure and they have changed so much from their initial contact to now yeah so they've even uh the tiered high fleets have even actually changed within their own species so they pick up and evolve specialized biomorphs specifically designed to fight their unique opponents because some high fleets uh <laughs> found that they attack more orcs than yeah. others and some high fleets are attacking soft fleshy humans and some are attacking space marines so yeah. you develop and, what it is needed in the moment yeah and also too depending on like the genetic uh templates that they absorb they'll get different things as well so if they are fighting space marines like hive guard are said to come from space marine dna where they're super tough and durable so if they're fighting a bunch of space marines they'll also then start to produce more tough things as well as things that counter space marines yeah. Uh, an interesting yeah. thing about Tyranids is that they've been known to change so quickly that they can engage uh, with a completely different or new species of Tyranid within a single battle. So they are they send a wave down and they get crushed and they're like, well, that didn't work very well. So they the hive mind adapts and changes and grows a new organism and gives it to the creatures and then sends out another wave. Yeah. And, and yeah, the, the key here too is it actually will change more than just like tactics. Like, oh, we attacked the front. Well, now we're going to attack the left. Like they'll actually grow new things. And that's... that's yeah. And we don't know exactly how long it takes to grow a new like gaunt. Yeah. Like that. And the, the thing that to me is really cool is that if a, a hive mind, let's say, grows a million gaunts, right and throws a couple thousand of them at this wave and the gaunts all die well it's way easier to grow tiny little organisms or biomorphs and attach them to the current gaunts yeah. that are still alive than it is to grow entirely new creatures yeah and that's something i really like about this is that like oh we just need to grow you tiny little gun weapons that are gonna suction themselves to your arms and hands and now you can fire them yeah. perfect that's way easier than growing a whole a, new gaunt a whole new gaunt. a whole new card effects yeah and that's something that really i like about this yeah. actually yeah yeah yeah, that's how they can change so quickly. Yeah. Um, over the past 500 years, it's unknown the amount... What? Under, over the past 500 to unknown amount of years of Tyranid contact, the race as a whole has... Uh, as a whole, hardly resembles the first contact on Tyran. And one of the, it, it's cool to think, too, that, like... Uh, for those people who are like old veteran gamers who've seen like the old first, well, maybe second edition Tyranid models or first edition. I don't know if they're in first, but where the, like the Carnifexes were so goofy looking and stuff and all their models were super goofy. I like to think that that's actually how they were back then. And like, they've now evolved into more like the beetle look that they have now. 
where like yeah. other this is like range. the only range it works for yeah yeah like you can't take a dark eldar and be like well they the evolve mo- yeah change. exactly but like it'd be cool to see like an army of like the old old models and see them in like current time yeah it, it, you could kind of say like this hive fleet got lost yeah and yeah. they didn't get any new material no new biomass so they've actually been stuck like this the whole time it'd yeah. be kind of cool to see that it was in hibernation for 500 years and now it's emerged and yeah, yeah it could be kind of cool um, you can make a story yeah. for anything. Oh, yeah. So, there are two major categories of Tyranid creatures. Uh, synapse and non-synapse, as everyone knows. Of course. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Take a drink. For everyone at home, following along with me and my alcoholism, <laughs> it's time to drink. <laughs> it's, not, it's time to drink. <laughs> so, uh, a synapse creatures are able to tap... <laughs> You're it's, the one who brought it. I know, but wow, <laughs> it's not great at this time of day. <laughs> no, it's ten there's in the reason, morning. There's reason people don't do it. It's actually ten twenty. Oh my god, <laughs> you liar! Stop judging Stop him. Stop lying, Eric. <laughs> Sorry. Gosh, uh, synapse creatures are able to tap into the hive mind and become a beacon to its will. Uh, they can use this power to control those lesser tuned creatures that normally are victims to their instincts without it. So they kind of, they're, they're router boosters. Yeah, yeah. Like, they connect to the Wi-Fi that is the hive mind, <laughs> and then they become a router. Yeah. And they and spread the signal farther. So non-synapse creatures are phones. That's right. Perfect. Like, an example that, of that would be when the Tyranids attacked Ball. Mm-hmm. They, Space Marines specifically target those. Yes, that is the definitely the and way then, to beat and them. And then the rest of the Tyranids just kind of are very easy to mop up because they're just kind of like animals. Yeah. But angry, hungry animals. Still, <laughs> yes, still animals that are capable of ripping you to shreds. Yes, but, but less, now they're, they're, they're smart anymore. Yes, exactly. It's like an animal with a gun. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God, it's got a gun. Oh. <laughs> I... I it's, I don't know. I know. It's, the hun- it's the hunting meme where, you know, it's coming right for us. And you shoot it. <laughs> oh, God, he's got AirPods in. What? <laughs> That's also a meme. I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot you don't go on Reddit. So you just sit in your little bubble. Don't know what's happening. I'm better in the world. than Reddit. <laughs> oh, cool. I know for a fact you go on Reddit, Eric. Oh. What's his account? I don't know his account. I think I know Mark's. Uh, just Lorehammer. Oh. <laughs> Gross. Plain. Yeah. Wow. Who goes on, <laughs> who goes on Reddit? Uh, yeah. <laughs> non synapse creatures. These creatures cannot feel the presence of the hive mind themselves. They must be close enough to a synapse creature to feel the will of the hive mind. Uh, when outside of the presence of the hive mind, they revert to base instinct, being either feed or hide. That's kind of their two kind of modes. So is it that hard to put the synapse in all of the? That seems like so a pretty helpful. We 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 talked about this more. a while ago. It costs more points. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, that's why they don't yeah. do it. No, so Fair. like even Fair. with the biomorphs, yeah, it all comes down to like being being able to grow stuff quickly and being able to use the material that you have efficiently. So if they're spending all this extra resources to putting it into everybody. That it's like, just more resources that you don't need. Because you don't need a single gaunt to be able to think for itself, to be tapped into the hive mind. Not when you have a hive tyrant next like, to it. Like, it just is a waste of resources. So even... Sure. E- yeah, even when it comes to, like, the biomorphs, it's like they'd rather grow one tiny little single organism than grow a whole new gaunt. So sure. They'd rather grow a gaunt and then toss on something specific onto it. But That or the points thing. Points. Either or. Depends points on... thing seems more... Where I would lean towards, but... <laughs> sure. Stop touching me, James. It's weird. <laughs> now you know how everyone get, else feels around this a, table. a third of a bottle of alcohol in him, and he's a completely different person. It's literally yeah. like two sips. <laughs> I have the, how the how many children of- have died <laughs> because of that? A 48! Lot. <laughs> a lot. Well, not children. Teenagers. Teenagers. Yeah, right. just teenagers. I don't kill children. <laughs> not an animal. I'm not a monster. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so now let's get into biomorphs. So as previously stated, biomorphs are symbiotic creatures that are attached to the larger and more complex tyranids. These additions create truly terrifying monstrosities. 
Yeah. So, and biomorphs will attach to synapse creatures, non synapse creatures. They'll attack to any tiered creature, even hive ships and stuff, like yeah. big spaceships. So, there's no set number of biomorphs in existence. There are some that are very common in each hive fleet across the galaxy. Um, new biomorphs can be created if a new or specialized one is needed. And some biomorphs have even been abandoned and haven't been seen in hundreds of years. Yeah. So it's but just, they might come back. They might come back. It's not that the hive fleet can't make them anymore. It's just that they've either found a better way of doing it yeah. or they just decided they don't need it anymore. Yeah. So let's talk about... Uh, we've kind of broken these into three different categories. Um, upgrades to their body, upgrades to like ranged weapons, or like melee weapons. So we're going to talk about upgrades to the body. So the, the most common upgrade that you'll find on basically every Tyranid creature is a hard chitinous shell. Chitinous. <laughs> Whew. Chitinous. Shitty, shittiness? Chitinous shell. shell. <laughs> so chitinous. Chitin. Chitinous. For regular speaking people. No. 99% of the people say chitin. Not true. Absolutely true. No. I mean, Only when I played Elder Scrolls, I thought it was Chitin. There you go. 99% but of do people... do you say Chitin? Or do you I, say Kite? I, I don't know. I'm, I struggle with words. So. <laughs> Especially when he's in the, in the liquor. In the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the bottle. <laughs> Saucing it up over there. <laughs> so, yes. And Kitan is going to cover everything. From the smallest Ripper to the largest Hierophant. They're yeah. all going to have these beetle-like coverings on their body. Yeah. And uh, it, it's crazy, too, like some of the ch uh, chitin. Oh, my God. <laughs> some of the chitin is described as actually like being a separate living organism that will latch on to tyranid creatures to protect them. I kind of like, like to imagine it's this plate, and on the bottom are just these hundreds of little hooks that are wriggling. And then when sucker the, sucker mouse. Yeah, kind of, but more like hooks. And then when it's but attached. Like sucker mouse. Like, or they're like suction cups. So <laughs> octopus. Yeah. I mean, I think they're grown at the same time as the gaunt. Like these ones, like this chitin is grown at the same time personally. Yeah. But I just like to think that every gaunt is like going along the conveyor belt. And there's just this plate of chitin is just dropped onto its back. And it just like <laughs> latches onto the... I mean, obviously that's not what happens. But I like to think of that. <laughs> I like to picture it too. Thanks, bud. Um, some so you'll there's a lot of different kinds of chitin. Like there's reinforced, heavy reinforced. Like there's so many. We put just put them all together. Yeah. Um, some have some creatures have more, some have less, and then there's some really unique chitins, um, especially on larger creatures. They can actually leak a resin-like substance that helps to absorb impacts and even speeds up recovery on wounds. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, nice. Good old Tyranid health plan. <laughs> it's universal <laughs> it's universal basic i wish Help, uh, i um, wish by that you just throw a gaunt a wounded gaunt into a vat of digestive juice and yeah recycling they healthcare. also they also have good recycling oh they have a hundred percent recycle rate so you know uh, what they're really they're the they're the future are they we're going to are they the that. good guys i mean Ooh. we don't do that here yeah <laughs> this is 40k oh they're about as close as you can get though interesting oh my god <laughs> i mean they're better than those little blue people oh those guys are clearly the, the villains. space communists oh my god yes. here we go Communi no, 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 they're, they're not communists. communists they're japanese warlords with communism with right. communism well yes. more socialism sure to the point of communism we don't like to call it communism because it's a trigger word for mark <laughs> Christians, but if we Christians use like psychic, yeah, like Christian is just right like, now. He's having a seizure yeah. right now. <laughs> if we use two big words, Mark's not going to understand that we mean communism. <laughs> I don't know what just yeah. happened. <laughs> What's a big word? Chitin. Chitin is a big word. <laughs> Let's talk about Let's talk about chitin. Exoskeletons. <laughs> Uh, so exoskeletons are actually different from chitin is in that these are bone growths outside of the body like and this bone can even have muscle and tendon attached to it but it's outside of the body and it's a biomorph yeah the, like I, I just like to think that a lot of biomorphs are microorganisms that cause extra things to happen on top of the body that's what like to me it's what i picture a lot of biomorphs acting as 
Um, they're not necessarily like like some of them are like actual creatures. Yeah, and a lot of them to me are just these little tiny organisms that cause changes in your body that don't exist outside of your body. Right. So essentially, it is just like how we have bacteria. Yeah, we have exactly. biomorphs as well. Sure. <laughs> We're all tyrannids. <laughs> uh oh. Gene Steeler Jim. <laughs> it's happening. Have you guys ever heard of the cult of the four armed emperor? Yeah. Have you ever heard of the four armed emperor? <laughs> um, Praise so be to him. The difference, the main difference between exoskeleton and chitin is that these bone growths actually get harder and stronger the older the tyranid becomes. Yeah. So chitin, once it's there, it's there. It's not never going to change. But bone growth will continuously get harder and stronger. Yeah. Unlike my penis. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is that just like I, this low hanging fruit? Why know? do you have that written in the nose? <laughs> <Stop it. laughs> uh, Acid blood. <laughs> Uh, these tyranids have blood that have been capable of burning through ceramite in mere moments. So ceramite acid. being like space marine armor. Yeah. So it's just fucking acid blood. Yeah. A lot of these are very specific or very, very obvious what they are. Like, yes. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's blood that's acidic. We, yeah, we got it. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about acid maw now. Um, so this biomorph two words acid we know what that means ma yeah. what does ma mean ma is like a mouth okay it's like so what, we got it's it. like what you call your mom when you're in the south ma, ma. <laughs> and she's made, acid acid. Of acid. <laughs> <laughs> she's made of acid oh my she knew my God. mom you know <laughs> you've been lore hammered <laughs> james mom <laughs> boom got her <laughs> Damn bitch. so <laughs> And Jake, boom goes the <laughs> That's your mom. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So acid ma is a biomorph that is a result of a sac being placed in the mouth, turning the saliva acidic. And that sac in the mouth, James. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I'm still on acid ma, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Sack in the mouth of the acid ma. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, and so this, it turns your saliva acidic and makes it capable of being used offensively. So it's common to see larger tyranids given this that use their mouths to bout to bite enemies. So like you have this big, massive creature with a huge mouth. That it will crush like a space marine, but at the same time, it just burns through their armor so they can get to the fleshy bits yum, inside yum, yum, better. Yum, yum. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Adrenal glands. This is a small organism that is attached to a tyranid creature and produces a powerful chemical. During combat, this chemical turns them into frenzied beasts overcome by bloodlust. You pay points for that. You do pay points for that. <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> Don't you pay points for all of them? Uh oh, I mean probably, but I think some uh, of these are like talons. talons. Yeah. yeah, I don't know about chameleonic skin. <laughs> I just know that <laughs> you take the adrenal glands because I think it you get a plus one to your charge. Cool, that's a good. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. Yeah, uh, yeah, I like this one. Like you, I just picture like a tiny little creature with like a needle, um, like a needle nose or something, and then it just it's always in there, and then. In the moment that the tyranid needs it, it just like expels adrenaline into the creature. It's like a reverse mosquito. Yeah, instead of <laughs> taking stuff out of it. <laughs> the reverse mosquito. <laughs> there it is. I'll just go ahead and leave now. That's probably the best thing I'm going to contribute all episodes. So. A reverse mosquito. <laughs> oh my god. Let's talk about adrenaline sacks. These sacks enhance the tyranid's fear. <laughs> He loves the wood sacks. <laughs> I just don't know where they're getting this stuff. Here. How much have you had of the beer? I'm like, not, not even half. I've not even drank a lot. Just the tip of it. Yeah, just oh tip. my god! <laughs> One drink, Jim. <laughs> One drink, Jim. I'm not a heavyweight, that's for sure. Sacks enhance the tyranid physical ability and senses. After a single use, the organism can no longer function. So it's a one shot. It's like a combat stim, really. Yeah. Yeah, just but it's a creature, which is really cool. So yeah. do you just like poop it out when you're done? No, I'm assuming like maybe you swallow it and it Eat like it? dissolves inside you, right, giving you its benefits, and then it you it's done. Oh, like, or sure. or it's a it's a reverse just mosquito. Straight, yeah, <laughs> it just sits on like the body and it just 
Yeah, but it can't, it can't like recreate it's more. No, yeah, and then it just falls off. It's like a tick. Hooks. It's like a reverse tick. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it just sits on the body, and then Good like thing you didn't leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've never heard that goal. <laughs> it, like, <laughs> it like injects the first the tyranid with. It's a sack, guys. Thing. It's called an adrenaline yeah. sack. Yeah, so it's just. Have you ever seen a tick? They're just a sack <laughs> with a hard layer of grossness over. Well, top obviously, of them. this is going to have chitin on it. Yeah. Uh, so Which is another biomorph. The biomorphs have got biomorphs. <laughs> that's oh right. my god. Well, that's they, have, right. they have teeth, so uh, obviously. <laughs> uh, okay, let's talk about blinding venom. <laughs> So this blinding venom enhances the organism to allow them to spit a burning venom onto their victims. Uh, it is most effective when aimed at the eyes or the groin Has or the hands even or hand stuff, uh, ears, <laughs> forehead, mm -hmm. shoulders, maybe, I don't know, or elbows, Toes. Uh, pretty much <laughs> anywhere is, uh, it's, it's venom. So pretty much anywhere is going to, I still think this is a silly one. I don't get well. The, the, the difference between like, if you have acid that you can spit, why would you bother with blinding them? Maybe they're <laughs> well, like they blind just, them with acid. So you have to, okay, here's, here's a, a weird Racing explanation for us. Everything is written from the Imperium's perspective. Sure. So when so they see these creatures, then, I guess. sure. When they see these creatures and they're like, some creatures seem to have like a bite that when they bite you, it burns. That's an acid maw, but they don't spit their stuff. But some creatures, they seem to spit an acid and they seem to always go for the head because it's a very important part of your body. So let's call that blinding venom. I know, but I feel <laughs> like GW gets away with... Oh, it's written from the Imperium's perspective for their lore just not making sense a lot. So, are you and saying that Games Workshop doesn't write good lore? Yeah, first of all. First of all, I've read the books. I know they don't write good lore. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Guys. Oh, wait, no, that's what this podcast is. I mean, it's great. <laughs> Sorry. Womp, womp, womp. Yeah, that, like, there's, you just gotta be able to laugh it off, Jim. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Jeez, that laugh. <laughs> uh, next one. Chameleonic skin. Is this one also a sack or? No, I like to think that these are uh, like little creatures that cover, that coat your entire body, like nanobots. To like coat your entire body. They said Autobots. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Roll out. <laughs> nanobots. Assemble. So then like, yeah, I guess that makes sense. They're like little things like, it, anything that we can do through science, I like to think that there's like, an organic equivalent here like a chameleon right yes but it's not like a chameleon oh, does it on its own they just they right? just go invisible what? but the tyranid underneath is still visible because <laughs> yeah. it's just the things on the top no that's all. exactly <laughs> how i imagine it i don't think that's how it no, is i think this is I, i'm chalking stuff some of these things up to old lore and new lore everything can be explained but, through yeah. the magic the wonders of well, I, don't think, I think it makes sense, though. Like, if it's an organism that coats you, maybe they're, like, communicating to the other side of the creature what, uh, absolutely. what the colors are. and yeah. Or maybe it's just, like, they change to a color when in the air around them is stimulated a certain there, way. There's, you, there's a million different explanations you could think of but for these things. right one. Oh, boy. <laughs> that's the one that's in Mark's head. Yeah, <laughs> clearly. That's, the guy, okay. that's my northern light for the lore. <laughs> oh. oh, dear. Uh, but you are, you've been led astray. <laughs> yeah, obviously, chameleonic skin just allows them to camouflage. Sure. All right. Next one. Containment spines. Some creatures have the ability to build up energy in their bodies and release it. These spines are given to creatures to allow them to fully utilize the burst of energy. Yeah. So we'll talk about another biomorph later that is linked to this one. Yeah. Uh, but this allows uh, creatures, and it's given to trigon primes yeah. primarily this containment spine yeah and um it just they can use this burst way more effectively than regular trigons yeah and that's all these containment their spines are. They're, they're little tesla coils on top of their bodies <laughs> yeah cool enhanced senses this biomorph gives the creature greater ability to their senses so hey, this one's super confusing don't talk like, about what it. is it like what does it do like so, the name is like kind of ambiguous. Like it what can, is it? Well, so, what are your senses? Taste, sight, hearing. 
Help me out, guys. There's 17 of them. Oh, God. Was there. I got no, three. There. I was just trying Taste? to make a did sarcasm. You, you sight? Smell? I was smell. making a sarcasm. It's very obvious what this is. <laughs> so what it does is when they stick out their tongue, an extra tongue shoots out of that. <laughs> That's right. They have tongues tongue. on their tongues. Yeah. Yeah. All, their, all their like sensory input is just doubled. Yeah. I feel more things. <laughs> They feel I mean, twice the emotion. <laughs> oh god! So much anger. I'm goddamn. I'm so hungry. Basically, they go through puberty. Ooh, is what it is. That's, that's just tiered puberty. It's just a whole crap load of testosterone. <laughs> that's all enhanced senses is. You just picture like this awkward teen Trigon Prime with just like Apache beard and like, <laughs> lots acne. of acne, <laughs> <laughs> like a fedora. Guys, maybe, nobody like, understands oh. me. <laughs> That anime is, is art. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry, I probably just lost you half your viewership. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, if you don't think animates art, you can leave. I, I'll leave now. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Oh my god. <laughs> Goodbye. Um, okay. <laughs> Implant Ooh. attack. So this biomorph gives Tyranids hollow fangs, serrated claws, barbed stingers that inflict uh, great internal damage. So like a little rippy, rippy, stabby, stabby. Uh, and forces their enemies to bleed out as well as pumping them full of toxins. Yeah, they're hollowed out and filled with toxins. Yeah, I like to imagine that um, they're, again, just little microorganisms or bugs that like eat through the teeth of like tyranids to like hollow them out and then like lodge themselves at like the root and then just start creating this poison that is just constantly going through the hole they just dug out trip 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 motherfucker <laughs> well uh yeah no that's kind of cool they would also have to create some sort of like holding because you can't just like release toxins into like the mouth the, the mouth of the tyranid well, they might because... be immune to it they also they, provide them with antibodies capable of fighting it. Yeah, but like it would be leaking out, right? So they have to create some sort of holding. Sure. Absolutely. Sack for why not? it. <laughs> more sacks. I'm with it. There has to be more sacks. Yeah, why not? This next one is a this is a choice. This is a remnant of the There's a lot of remnants. There's a ninety nine percent of them are remnants. Yeah. I too have this biomorph. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us all about it. Well, it's not I, I too can jump <laughs> distances <laughs> to get closer to people, to perhaps get, to get closer to things. <laughs> not just people. <laughs> when I'm at school, university, all of a sudden I just hear crash right behind me. Just <laughs> turn around, Nathan just jumped through the ceiling. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> oh like, my god, where did you leap from? It's making my student fees just so large. Just <laughs> always breaking shit. Oh, Michael Jordan worst. has this biomorph. Leaping, <laughs> leaping. <laughs> hmm. Mm hmm. He's got a biomorph. We're all tyranids, I've been told. Uh, yeah, we're yeah. we're all one with the tyranid. <laughs> you guys just need to come with me to my little cult. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So leaping is exactly how it sounds. <laughs> Yeah, this one's it's imaginative. Like, this one's like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I've never a biomorph seen leaping before. Ooh, what it like? What is the biomorph? Does it like put springs on your feet? Like little they <laughs> grow you, into have little you seen springs. Those moon shoes oh, yeah. <laughs> from oh the nineties. That's what it is. It's just <laughs> moon shoes. <laughs> I remember those. Perfect. God, I'm old. To optic membranes. Oh, let me stew in my filth. Yeah, over there. This is an extra membrane that covers the eye, giving the creature increased resistance to blinding from flashes of lights. Was this Great. was this used in like um, fifth? You know how when you were assaulting someone in a building, you would like throw a grenade to disorient them. Mm -hmm. Was this like a counter to that? I to be honest, I don't recall. Hmm. Might might have been. Um, it's what it makes I, it, me it definitely. It's what it makes me think of. Yeah. This one is like the one that actually makes the most sense to me so far. Yeah, I like it. It makes well, sense. Leaping. Totally. Wow, <laughs> leaping is important. But yeah, it's another like new... actually like a membrane that grows over, so it fits the biomorph. Yeah. Like, and it actually is like, yeah, it's stopping something that's probably going to happen. What? Dude, are you telling me that there's not going to be a scenario where you're going to need 
blinding venom <laughs> in oh, addition well, well. to your actual acid I know, adrenal sacs. I know that most of <laughs> Space Marine, like, high command decides not to wear helmets mm-hmm, most mm-hmm. of the time. That's helpful. So then blinding venom comes in it's real handy. handy. Or and then they get in a spit off because the Space Marines are spitting acid. He spits back. So yeah, yeah, he spits back. He, he <laughs> catches <laughs> all the blinding venom in his mouth <laughs> and then he just spits it right back at you, adding his own flavor. Yeah. I feel like that's an underutilized Space Marine power. The ability to spit acid. Yeah, that's I've why never none of them wear helmets. Yeah, I've never seen. It should it. give them an extra attack in combat, <laughs> or it gives them like a pistol, like attack. a flamer pistol type <laughs> thing, where it's like an auto, auto hit pistol. T strength two, auto hitting, <laughs> one damage. You guys can't write rules. AP minus seven. <laughs> oh my God. There we go. It's acid. It is acid. <laughs> yeah, and it's auto. What's hitting. the range on this? One, one inch. inch. Okay. That's okay. I play custodies, so I got invuns anyways. The mm. minus seven doesn't bother me. <laughs> so your force field just stops this acid spit? I guess so. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's talk about another one. Regenerate. This biomorph fills a body with an enhanced ability to repair itself. Some creatures have been able to... Some creatures have even been seen to recreate limbs or and entire organs. Except for old one eye. He hasn't been able to do that, apparently. The one who is known to be able to regenerate. regenerate can't regenerate the his eye. Fucking games work. So. <laughs> yeah. My God. Maybe it's a choice. <laughs> he just he's just like, I want people to remember oh, yeah. me. Yeah, cool. Guys, remember me? Yeah. Or maybe he, like, oh, one he like, saw some like, pirate stuff, and he was like, I'm about this. <laughs> <laughs> Model him with a little bird on his shoulder. But then like an eye patch. <laughs> Biomorph eye patch, yeah. yeah. That's an optic membrane. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Not, yeah. Uh, the thorax swarm. This is one of the cooler ones. Uh, so the thorax swarm actually creates a large cavity on the host chest filled with a swarm of parasitic bugs. This swarm bursts open and surrounds the enemy and deals damage in a variety of ways. So there's three different kinds of bugs that can fill this chest cavity. So the first is electroshock grubs. Uh, So these generate bolts of electricity arcing between all the bugs in the swarm. So it just cooks whatever is in the middle of it. Or there's the desiccator larva. And these larva latch onto their victims and then suck the moisture out of their victims within seconds, leaving a dry husk. Oh, it sounds like my wife. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) And then the last one is shredder shard. Shredder shard beetles. And these beetles burrow into um, the cracks, any cracks or crevices that they can find, and then they explode. That one sounds like me. Oh my god! <laughs> Showering their victims in a cloud of needles. Oh, that does sound like you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that one's really cool. There's just yeah, like like that's a good example of like what biomorph should be, and from here on out should be written like yeah, where they're actually living creatures. Yeah. Like, I have... Uh, well, like, I also like the idea of, like, them being, like, microorganisms. I just want them described that way. Yeah, sure. I sure. just... I also think leaping is a very dumb... Mark, we all think leaping is a dumb biomorph. What about um, claws and teeth? I also think that is a dumb biomorph. What about wings? Uh, I'm not entirely sold on wings. My God, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> Toxic miasma. These are vents located on the backs of creatures that create a gas. This gas fills the air and chokes victims on their own blood. But that's a good one, too. It's just a creature that, like, when it breathes out, it creates a gas. And No, it's on the backs. Yeah, yeah. No, the, the, it cr- the, the vent is the creature that latches on oh, the backs of yeah, creatures. Oh, yeah, I see what you're and saying. And when it exhales, it creates a gas yeah, yeah, yeah. that is toxic. That's cool. That's right. Toxic, toxin sacks. That's right. <laughs> All, ew. I baited him. Drank. I was Drank. thirsty. Uh, okay, toxin sacks. I was thirsty. You're getting yourself <laughs> drunk. <laughs> These sacks hold small mites that secrete poison onto the bio weapons that their host is using. So I like, like if their host is holding the bio weapon, obviously, like I like to think that the sack is like on the wrist yeah, or on is. like the forearm, right? And then it's just these little mites that crawl from the sack to the weapon and like smear them their secretions onto the weapon. I th- with right. all these sacks hanging off these guys, you'd think like they run into a wall and just like leaves a goo from the sack Maybe. bursting. Well, why would they need a sack for this one? Why can't it just be mites that live on like the host's body? It could be that. 
well but there are sacks. specifically it's a sack yeah but you could you can like this sack could be tiny right and they have like ridges they have like ridges and like chitin everywhere so it wouldn't be hard to think it's like underneath one of those things right but it's not but you could say that (laughs) you could say a lot of things you can say a lot yeah it's your turn (laughs) only up so (laughs) it's your turn at high fleet do whatever you want okay so we just talked about toxin sacks uh let's talk about venom sacks (laughs) god the sacks for days yeah (laughs) Uh, so this biomorph is a sack full of corrosive venom that the host can coat onto their bio. So what the hell is the difference between like toxins, mites, and, and not mites, venoms, <laughs> and poisons? It's obviously well, mites, you dumb bitch. No, it, a poison is a substance that has like a noxious effect on living organisms. A toxin is a poison that is produced by a living organism. So like a venom. Is a toxin injected from a living organism into another? A venom, therefore, is not a toxin, but a toxin can be a poison. Are you following me? Not all poisons are toxins. Not all toxins are venoms. Simple. Didn't you learn that in grade three science, like the rest of us in the room? No, I don't. I don't think so. Mark's just dropping knowledge. It's a simple formula. It, yeah. V it's equals T and less T isn't always V. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> Wings. Oh, <laughs> <good morning. laughs> All right. This is also a dumb one. Yes, this is a very dumb one. Yeah. It, like you have a creature that's growing on your back that is just a wing. And you have to have two of them. because if No, you it's just one have, creature. I, are you sure? No, I have no idea. It could be two creatures it growing out of two. your back. And then all of a sudden one, you're like, why two did left we, get, wings? Yeah, <laughs> we gave him the, pl- the DNA plan for two left wings? <laughs> <laughs> well, just flopping around on the ground. <laughs> you can only turn right. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of rejects on the on the <laughs> ships that are just like, they, we they broke just get them. You have the right to the reproduce. <laughs> There's a little tyrannid union. <laughs> Give us jobs. <laughs> We're still useful. There's like the the galactic health organization of tyrannids giving out rights for them. G H O T. Yeah. Got. got the goat. <laughs> it is I goat. find is like trying to lure them back into like the pits with like j- job applications. <laughs> like come, come. Jobs yeah, are they, in here. They have a biomorph that's just there to convince other tyrannids to go back into the pools. <laughs> Those are synapse creatures, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. They made him really charismatic. Yeah. So that that pretty much does it for the body enhancement version of biomorphs. Yeah. A lot of them don't work well. Now we'll get to the ones that do work well though. Yes. Now we're like we'll get to the ones that are people want to hear about. You know, we're gonna give the people what they want. For once. Yeah. Let's talk about space marines. That's right. Ooh, yeah. wait. You you never want to talk about space marines. But we're gonna give people what they want. That's right. Sigismund, here we come. <laughs> oh, we're talking AOS now or Oh my God. What? No, this, that's Sigmar. S- yeah, Sigismund is the son of Dorn. You sick pile of. No, I thought we were giving the people what they want. Oh <laughs> Nobody wants to talk about AOS. <laughs> have you ever seen naked dwarves? They have naked dwarves. It's hard to shirtless. Be. Really? It's hard to beat. Yeah. We, the best part is we don't even have to change the name of our podcast to now be an AOS podcast. It's it could true. be. Yeah. It's arguably more relevant. Of a name. Because uh, there's actually true. a hammer. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Interesting. There Sigmar's hammer. Oh, well, yeah. It's kind of a big deal. It it's is. kind of a big thing. There's a couple hammers, I hear. I only wants. know about Sigmar's hammer. Wow. It's a pretty big hammer. It's a big Schultz hammer. Schultz has a hammer. Schult- the Schultz oh. hammer? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a <laughs> thong holding an apple. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. What? <laughs> range range biomorphs <laughs> my god acid spray this bio weapon stores up huge amounts of acidic digestive juices and sprays it over a large Did area you say that's right <laughs> that's right that's <laughs> right <laughs> that's two three here we go three uh, even though it uses you could just say digest- five i'll probably do it all <laughs> that's so many teens oh my god <laughs> there goes four of them oh god, oh god. Damn, <laughs> all the teens <laughs> why <laughs> So, mm. do I have direct to, your complaints to the United States government, not me? 
all the teams that are You're just the messenger. <laughs> I'm just the delivery boy. <laughs> Angel of death. Yeah. So, acid spray, even though it uses digestive st stomach juice, this cannon is attached to the arm of the host. It's kind of cool to think that, yeah. like, even though it's a cannon attached to the arm, it has, like, a link to the stomach and is just taking the digestive stomach juices yeah. and then expelling them out. Yeah. So, for most of these ranged weapons, they actually are, look like they're, they're... Part of the organism. Part of it. But, yeah, they, they take on the shape of, like, what you would think a gun would look like. But they are still creatures. But they are creatures, yes. Sure, and that this one, it's better. Almost, they, they get, these get better Yeah. than a lot of the older ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what, ah, uh, oh, damn it, I forget his name, so I'm not going to be able to make the joke. Pass on, I'll come back to it. <laughs> the barbed <laughs> okay, strangler. Okay. This is a cool one. This bioweapon fires <laughs> seeds no bigger than a man's fist. Oh, I remembered. It's too late, the moment's passed. <laughs> Go ahead, James. That's no, okay. George Decay told me it'd get better. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it didn't. Because it will get better. <laughs> uh, this bioweapon fires seeds no bigger than a man's fist. When the seed lands and it detects heat, it grows tendrils and hooks that within seconds can tear and rip their victims apart. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So it just like latches on to like a guardsman and it's like, oh my God, must grow. And then it just like burrows its tendrils into the guardsmen to rip yep. it apart it'll also burrow into the ground and like trap and ensnare people as well it'll but just, it needs heat but it'll go also through the guardsmen yeah like it it'll just go anywhere pretty cool but yeah, yeah the like the bioweapon is like a living creature and it just has like seeds inside of it yeah. that it creates biocannon so this can generate a large electrochemical shock that spews forth highly venomous and corrosive maggots perfect delicious they then explode on contact and can reduce anything into a steaming pile of goo yeah a lot of the uh weapons they actually fire with like bioelectricity yeah what like it it's actually kind of cool yeah yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll get into some another one yeah that seems to be the two main ways bioelectricity or muscle spasms yeah you, <laughs> you just had a little <laughs> I just, seizure i just fired one Ew. off, if you know what I mean. Oh. <laughs> Someone changed spots with me. <laughs> Sticky pants. You want to sit in my spot? Uh, <laughs> James. <laughs> no, I ain't going over there. <laughs> Not again. Uh, Bioelectric pulse. So this biomorph allows creatures to store electrical energy from their body and release it as a pulse attack. This is the worst version of the containment spines yeah. that we talked about earlier. Yeah. So this is very common to see trigons with this, um, but yeah, like it, it's pretty sweet. Like they'll burrow up through the ground and then like they'll unleash this attack and it'll just be like waves of electricity, like shocking arcs, just shoot off of them. Yeah, it's just a creature that's capable of holding onto this pulse and then releases it because it's digging through the ground. It's like when you rub yourself on the carpet and you get all staticky, as go. one is t is tended to do. Yeah. Rub yourself on the carpet. Well, it's yeah. nightcrawlers. And then it is nightcrawlers. You're playing nightcrawlers. <laughs> yeah, and then it bursts through the ground and just exactly. releases all the static. That's right. Bio torpedo. No, you miss bioplasma. Oh, this is just plasma generated through the stomach and then blinding ball or bolt vomited on the enemy. No big it's deal. Vomited. A high pitched scream is often heard too, as well. Oh, <laughs> that's not. Oh, that's not how I imagined it at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> You're just like, you're on the battlefield, you're a guardsman walking down the trenches, you're like, oh god. Oh, <laughs> oh god, take cover, take what cover, let's go. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of guardsmen, are rubber-soled shoes, like, standard for the guardsmen? Those shoes aren't standard yeah. for guardsmen. <laughs> I was gonna say, it's a las gun. that's the only piece of standard equipment, well, with bayonets. Okay, so they get their bayonets. No, that's, yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah. They're, they're just rods walking towards an electrically charged <laughs> trigon that's unfortunate for them uh bio torpedoes so these organisms appear as spines on tyranid bio ships and upon launch they seek out enemies and explode on impact perfect so they you're like a speed you're like you're a creature and your life is to be a torpedo <laughs> that kind of sucks <laughs> It's okay. It's the all hive, for the hive mind. The hive mind's decided it. Yeah. The hive mind protects. 
No. <laughs> no? No. Am I saying you, that wrong? Do you know my great lord and leader? The the forearmed emperor? <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> it's spreading. I only have two more to go. <laughs> <laughs> don't let him touch you. <laughs> Please don't touch me. <laughs> well, I've already touched you. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> In your soul. Oh, no. no, physically I've touched him. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know? Do you Who's guys have penis like a, do you have, opens up <laughs> to accept? To accept? <laughs> Is there like a Lorehammer HR I can talk to? Or? Yeah, that's James. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. He surprisingly is the most uh, qualified. Qualified amongst us. <laughs> I don't know. Which how is I weird because he's just a liquor pig. <laughs> 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 All right, cluster spines. These are quills embedded in a tyranid body capable of launching considerable distances. They explode into thousands of shards upon impact. Yeah, just shoots out spines. Cool. Porcupine style. That's right. Well, porcupines, porcupines, porcupines can't don't. shoot quills. Yeah. Okay, thanks, uh, Mark. I watched Homeward Bound, you dumb bitch, and it, <laughs> it fucking shot those quills. Shit. It's getting well, real now. Homeward Bound. I'm going God. Homeward Bound. <laughs> that must have been 20 years ago. <laughs> when did that movie come out? While you look up that, this is I'll the research up, uh, that we do while live. Is yeah, homeward bound. <laughs> All right, bets, bets, bets. When did it come out? Nineteen ninety-two. Okay, ninety-five. Ninety-five. Best year of my life, Nathan. Ninety-three. <laughs> best, best year of my life. What happened in nineteen ninety-five? Homeward bound came out. <laughs> Actually, it came out in nineteen ninety-three. Oh. oh, Nathan wins the prize today, which is a nice. Uh, gift you have the you seat mean, of honor in james next cult meeting i wasted two years of my eh, life not watching you homeward bound <laughs> yeah. i could have been you yep. definitely did fuck Dang me it. i was one year off yeah 1993 it's uh God. apparently a sequel to a 1963 movie oh old yeller <laughs> mm. Mm. very different outcome in the, that movie the dog the dog comes back in that movie right? <laughs> i haven't finished it yet i'm watching it tonight <laughs> oh no it's not a sequel it's a spoilers re- it's a spoilers. remake oh it's a remake so it is old yeller no <laughs> the first movie was called the incredible journey which was based on oh i novel. heard some dark things about that movie yeah, they killed a lot of animals. Oh, oh well, Homeward film. Bound oh, is called goodness. Homeward Bound: The Incredible Journey. Yeah, in The Incredible Journey, the first one in 1960, they weren't exactly like friendly. Animal friendly. Yeah, they weren't animal <laughs> friendly with how they got grinder. some of the shots. Oh, oh, you mean like they actually killed animals? Yeah, like yeah, not like, just in the movie. You want to see no, an yeah, animal yeah. fall off a cliff? You just push them. Like yeah, <laughs> yeah get wow. the shot. Wow, and James takes another sip, <laughs> kills four more. I dudes. could be wrong. I could be wrong. Sure, but I, that's just what I heard. It's it already out there. It's already yeah, canon just now. Slander random people. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. no big deal. If you guys it's get fine. copyrighted, it's you, not me. <laughs> this is all under the umbrella of Lorehammer. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I still don't want to go to jail. I'm too pretty. Mm. Okay. Well, mm. let's not lie to people. I'm a bear. <laughs> <laughs> not in jail. You're not. <laughs> I'm a baby bear. No, you're an otter in jail, bud. <laughs> <I'm an otter. laughs> Eric's not crafty enough to yeah. be an otter. <laughs> wow. Nervous. <laughs> uh, death spitter. Let's talk about the death spitter biomorph. This launches a corrosive maggot through muscle spasms. The maggot then splats to death. <laughs> Sometimes releasing, I get bored while writing these. <laughs> splats to death, releasing violet, volatile, violet? violet volatile fluids onto the target. That's this sounds about right. This it is a gun. Splats. This is a gun. Yeah, all, all these are basically yeah. guns. Well, some of them like exit like, through the mouth, but yeah. this is actually a, a death spitter is a gun yeah. that releases a ma- shoots a maggot <laughs> that splats to death. to death all the way That's to right. death uh well if it didn't splat to death it would be kind of a useless gun mm-hmm. but it could just splat and it'd still be alive how the body is splat <laughs> it has once it, you splat it splats. You <laughs> yeah uh devour the devour is a conical lump of partly rotted flesh this gun uses bioelectric jolts to hurl its ammo which is flesh worms perfect at creatures these worms will burrow into the flesh consuming as they go 
<laughs> yeah, this is a weird one. Oh, there's nothing nice about Tyranids. A lump of partly rotted flesh that is just full of these worms that are eating the flesh, creating new fucking fleshy worms. Uh, yeah, it's gross. It's great. You like it? I love it. Yep. Give me more. <laughs> Drool cannon. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> here you go. Uh, so this cannon vomits a wave of digestive fluid on those directly in front of it. Uh, the cannon is located actually within the mouth. As opposed to being, uh, a, being a gun that he carries. Yeah. But if you, if you look at the... For a it, drool gun to be in the mouth? Yeah, but it just there's like this tube in your mouth when you open it. Oh. Check, yeah, it's really weird. Like yeah, the so tyranid like opens the, its mouth and there's just like a tube that comes out. Because the creature bleh. like will eat the original creature's tongue and latch onto the stub. And then... Mark, you it did it. Blech. You got it. I got it. Real life. Flame spurt. Yep. An organic flamethrower. We don't know how it functions, but probably through making a gas and then a bioelectric spark and or maybe a fluid. Maybe a fluid. Makes yeah. a fluid. Who knows? This yeah, there's not a description of this one, so but it exists. Oh oh my god, there's still so many. Oh my god. Yeah, we're like <laughs> Flesh <hooks>. halfway through. <laughs> there's a lot of biomorphs. <laughs> Flesh hooks. These ones are pretty cool. These are long sinewy tentacles with sharp bar barbs on the end. They are coiled inside the chest and expelled through muscle spasms with the intent to snag prey and pull them closer. Yes. I yeah. like this one. Come to me. Come to me. Come, come to here. Me. <laughs> Get over here. Scorpion? Yeah. More the, combat? The second one was. Mortal. I like how you to do the rewrite halfway through the night. Come over here. No, that's not right. That's right. Get over <laughs> here. We're going to edit that out. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah we do. These, episodes, These are highly like, heavily edited. edited. <laughs> yeah. We give Jordan 10 hours of content, yeah. content, and he finds only 20 minutes or so that's good. Yeah. The rest is just a useless dribble. <laughs> He probably struggles to find that 20 minutes. He oh, it is a struggle. <laughs> That's very real. <laughs> uh, flesh borer. So this is a, a weapon that contains a small nest of borer beetles. The weapon shocks the beetle, and they fly straight out of the weapon. If anything gets in their way, they bore right through them. <laughs> so th yeah, like there's like a nest of beetles inside this weapon. The weapon delivers Jeez. like a shock into the nest, and then the beetles are like, Ugh! and they <laughs> leave the weapon just straight out. And if anything gets in their way, heaven help them. Heaven help them. Heaven help them. Seems em. like not the most effective weapon though. Like a bunch of bugs. Like, I, could they fly as fast as a gun can shoot? Well, I don't think... Yes. Don't, I think you shoot them, and then at a certain range, they just, like, start flying themselves. But I think it could be actually, out of all the weapons, this one could be one of the best, because you could shoot a bunch of beetles, and then the beetles just, like... Find targets? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> the horror. So nervous. I'm glad this doesn't exist in real life. Life would suck. It does, <laughs> actually, though. Yeah, we're all Tyranids. Yeah, that's true. That's you true. just haven't we just haven't achieved these biomorphs yet yeah. oh my god well at least they can't be shot at me then <laughs> why not because i'm a tyrannid yeah but you're from a different high fleet Did... okay <laughs> <laughs> you're from <laughs> you're from high fleet canadia <laughs> oh no and when high I'm fleet not... when high fleet europa attacks <laughs> we're screwed high fleet iran <laughs> <laughs> Too, pl too political. I'm I'm going off it. <laughs> it's the liquor. Too on the nose. I'm too drunk. <laughs> oh god! Someone take it away from him. <laughs> oh, he's fighting us. Why, <laughs> James? Where'd you get the knife? No <laughs> one takes my liquor. It's a, it's a simple inverse of it's a simple keister. <laughs> James, <laughs> why are you keistering? <laughs> James, you could have just brought that. Like yeah, no one would have pocket. said anything. In my flesh pocket. <laughs> <laughs> all right grasping tongues <laughs> let's talk about grasping tongues so this is a massive tongue that has grasping claws on the end of it designed to pull in huge targets to its waiting maw like this one is one of the crazier looking biomorphs yeah because it really is big like it like the claws look almost bigger than the head that the tongue is coming out of <laughs> like it's it's time. it's really crazy but yeah it's you'll find these on like much larger creatures like carnifexes capable of pulling in like rhinos and dreadnoughts or wraith lords name some more 
Annihilation barges, mm-hmm. Star Weavers, mm-hmm. Devilfish. No, too quick. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're too well, good. They're well, too good. Okay. The Tau can't be defeated by Tyranids. <laughs> yeah, it just won't happen. Okay. Although, like, have the have the Tau ever been defeated by Tyranids? Tau have never been defeated. Yeah. Okay. Regardless of race, have you heard of? They've been exterminatist as did. did. Exterminatus. That's just what the Imperium wants you to think. Yeah, that's just mm. propaganda. That's just Imperial right. propaganda. And the fact that they've never been defeated is Tau propaganda? No, it's fact. Uh, okay. Mm. I think it's just the fact that they haven't expanded very far is why they've never been yeah. defeated. They've had like contact with like the most peaceful aspects of the Imperium. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's not that we think Tyranid or Tau are like useless small baby aliens it's just that uh-huh well they're useless small baby aliens uh-huh, uh-huh. sorry 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 you had to find out this way <laughs> yeah this is not how i was planning on telling you oh, i had well, a man. song and dance well, I, prepared i guess i'm bringing imperial knights then to my uh to the Ooh. tournament then yeah james is your partner do it <laughs> yeah. all right space marines hey are- hey you guys- <laughs> You guys can play real players. Yeah. Well, me and Eric dick around. <laughs> we just meme. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Awful. My half of the list is not going to perform very well. Yeah, so we'll be middle of the tier. Great. Oh, Perfect. Okay. Well, Are sure. you bringing Asriel? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You, but, let's do a little more Asriel. Let's talk about let's the Venom more. Cannon. Uh, Venom Cannon is a bioweapon that fire crystals formed from highly corrosive poisons. Uh, the electrostatic charge is used to fire it at tremendous speeds. If the impact alone does not kill the target, the poisonous shards will. Sucks. Sucks. I approve this weapon. Yeah. It sounds great. It sounds really cool. Yeah, it sounds- it's different because it's not like a bug or like a goo, right? It's yeah. a crystal. Yeah. Uh, so the Impaler Cannon, this bioweapon fires bone shards. These ones bone are storm. What the fuck? First boss in Ice Crown Citadel? I don't think that's a thing. All right. At the base of each of the spines is a small shard beast, tyranid creature, a parasite that feeds off the blood vessels of the spine. As the spine is fired, the shard beast on its <laughs> shard beast own innards are torn from its body, <laughs> and it only has a few moments left of life to use its thin membrane membranous membranous membranous. I didn't write this. Fins to steer the spine towards its prey. So it fires a, like a spear of spine, of bone, yeah. but there's a tiny creature on the back of it yeah. who like dies, or he's dying as soon as the weapon's fired, yeah. and he just has a couple moments to like steer the bone spear while it's flying. Yeah. We kind of had that even in modern times, because you'd put if you put like a some sort a of chip baby in onto a, a <laughs> oh <laughs> if you put a baby i didn't know where you were going uh, put like a, a like a computer chip into a missile that's that, essentially that what it exists. is yeah in, uh, yeah that's what i'm saying it those, exists. Those already exist that, James. i know no no so in world war ii there's a program um where called the manhattan project no, they no, put babies on the front of rockets <laughs> no no so they <laughs> steer they yeah put, the pigeons right that's one well, of them, and sure, bats. and bats. But the oh, one yeah, that's okay. really funny is they had cats, and cats always land on their feet, so they'd drop them out of airplanes with bombs attached to them, and they would try to direct themselves to enemy ships. Is this real? This really happened. They, were using, not a, they strapped explosives to cats? Yeah, and <laughs> the thought process was cats will always try to land and land on their feet, so when they dropped them out of airplanes, they'd try to guide, the cats would try to guide themselves towards like enemy ships how <laughs> did they just throw a bunch of fish on the <laughs> no because cats naturally just want to land on their feet and land somewhere they don't want to land in the water that's hilarious it's a real thing so some cats would just land in the water and drown yes it wasn't very I mean, effective that's probably better the than the one. ones that landed on the ship and blew <laughs> off probably <laughs> what on earth well there was the, also a pigeon one where they'd put a camera inside of like some sort of bomb and then the pigeon would would be trained to click on a ship and then they'd use that to direct where the missile would go on the <laughs> missile so they'd have pigeons clicking on a camera <laughs> trying to find the ship 
What on earth? Crazy World War Two guys. They were just coming out with all kinds of biomorphs. They could get away with anything. What a There's wild no rules. place. They're just pigeons. They're just yeah. Man, it's just too bad the, the atom bomb was created. Because if it wasn't, we'd have, like, the reason, we'd live in a very different yeah, world. Because the reason why they stopped all these projects is then they created the atom bomb, and they're like, "Fuck these cats!" <laughs> <laughs> like, so we don't need pigeon guided missiles anymore. Yeah, exactly. So they cancel. All you these don't need cats programs. loyal to the fatherland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what what country was doing the cats? U.S. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, all yeah. of this is U.S. <laughs> yeah, that all makes that all tracks. Yeah. Weird. Okay, let's talk about <laughs> pyro acid batteries. So this biomorph is located on hive ships, and they use they they launch pyro acid at enemy ships. <laughs> what is pyro acid? It's acid that's also a, a flammable. Actually, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, so it, like, can is acid flammable normally? No, I no, don't milk think is so. A, milk is an acid. <laughs> <laughs> milk isn't flammable. Okay. And in World War Two, they it, were using milk to, milk to burn acid? the Jews. All right, <laughs> I might be wrong. What are you on that? Like, <laughs> milk is probably an acid. No, no milk is it base. could be a base. No, it's acid. Really, it's pH level. Whatever tit you're getting that point. milk from, Eric, it's it's a rotten tit. It's because it contains lactic acid. So I mean, neutral is seven, right? Yeah, and it's six point seven to six point nine. So it's pretty okay. much neutral. Okay, but it is acidic. Interesting. Wow. Not really. The things you know. But yeah, <laughs> the more would, you know. That I feel like that would work pretty well. Sure. Like, it, like, the acid's burning through, and then all of a sudden, it lights on fire and like burning through your ship or whatever. And, and then it's like, corrosive. Shit. And then it's toxic. <laughs> and yeah, poisonous. I just, I'm sure there's also, a chemist out there who could tell us like why you can't have a flammable acid. acid. Like it's probably to do with the chemical structure of an acid will not lend itself to being flammable. Could be. I'm sure that's a thing. <laughs> and this is just shit lore. But <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So don't care. Uh -huh. Direct all your emails to Mark. <laughs> Most corrosives mm. are either acid or bases. But not all toxins are venoms, but venoms are toxins. <laughs> but not all bases are flammable because mm. milk. Because milk. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard milk of milk? Is an acid, actually. <laughs> yeah, Have you ever is. heard of it, milk? It is acidic. <laughs> it is not flammable. 6.7 to 6.9. <laughs> Do not drink milk. <laughs> it's flammable. <laughs> Well, we can't confirm that, but it probably is corrosive and definitely is acidic. <laughs> Guys, if we're not careful, big milk's going to come after us. <laughs> Parmalay. We're, we are tyranids. We create acid that is flammable. That's right. We just half of our species has that biomorph. Only the big ships. Only the ships. Only have the that. big ships. So after the pyro acid has burned a hole, uh, either through acidic or pyro, in the side of a ship, it, they send in waves. Well, of it wouldn't be pyro. How do you know? It's burning a hole. Yeah, it would be a acid. How do you know? Because it's in space. So? There's no oxygen. There's no oxygen in space. space. Forget what you think you know about space. The warp is an ocean. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and it flows through. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, rupture cannon. So this bioweapon fires two seed pods in quick succession. The first pod is covered in an oily substance that splatters across the target. And the second pod penetrates into the target, and within moments, it dissolves, triggering a chemical explosion with the first pod's oil. That's cool. That is very cool. It, and it combusts things from, like, the inside. Yeah. Hmm. So Kinda it'll like penetrate it. and, like, brings the oil inside and then starts to burn. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And if that happens to you, ladies, contact your doctor immediately. <laughs> Stop <laughs> using... Eric. The next is yeah. <laughs> Megan, this is for you. <laughs> Stop <laughs> using Eric. <laughs> Guys, that was one time. Okay? That's enough. That's, you yeah. fuck one goat, you're a goat fucker. <laughs> you spend yeah. your whole life helping children, <laughs> building schools, getting clean water, and you fuck one goat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ripper tentacles. Ripper tentacles. Long, powerful tentacles that, that will, will attack. Rip. They rip. Yes. Cool. <laughs> Shock cannon. 
<laughs> you got it. You nailed it, James. <laughs> this bioweapon. First egg. <laughs> Shock cannon. This bioweapon fires a bone spike into the target. The spike has a tendril attached to the back of the host species, back to the host species, which then conducts a bioelectrical charge along the tendril, shocking the so target. So it's like a tether. Yeah. Yeah, so it fires like a spike into the target, which is a tether attached to the creature, and the yeah. creature sends a shock along that. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. It kind of feels like that would... Um, what was the other bio uh, biomorph that allowed them to create the electrical shock? Oh, um, yeah. Right, the one that the Trigons... <laughs> well, the one that the Trigons have. <laughs> I can find it. Um, was that a range weapon? Cluster spines. Nope, nope, not those. Guys, come on, help me out here. Biopulse. Yes, bioelectric pulse. So it's kind of like, it almost feels like those two are connected. Could be. Right? Like you have your bioelectric pulse on the back, and then there's just that tether that's in there, and it just shoots out something. And I don't know. It's kind of cool to think of like the different combinations you can make with these biomorphs. Are you making up biomorphs now? Uh, yes. No. <laughs> that's fine. Yes. Biomorphs can be made. No. I feel like. If you were making up lore, though, you would probably not care as much about biomorphs just because they wouldn't display in the in your army very much because yeah. you can only select the ones. And then it doesn't like, sure, you could make up a story that your biomorphs do something, but it wouldn't really add a lot. No, no. no. So no, it's no, like, I'm with that's you. like me writing like men at arms a thousand times. Doesn't yeah. add anything. Chef at arms. Chef at arms. Like, because when. Servants at arms. Mm -hmm. The squigs, when you're talking about different kinds of squigs, there's totally, yeah. you could make up, oh, this squig does this. And it, it yeah. kind of adds some flavor. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. biomorphs, they're kind of just like, unless I, they act out on the table somehow it doesn't really add anything well that's like the like yes you you don't really care about writing biomorphs in books right no. you care more about writing biomorphs for the table and then when you're writing tyranid books you flip through all the ones you have and you pick a unique one to display in that moment in the book sure like that's more what i see it as it's not like it's not like um, in the book you're writing some inquisitorial log that's listing 70 different biomorphs. Well, I just mean even if that you're like, be okay, a the bad Tyranids are... if you just rambled off a yeah, bunch of like, biomorphs. What kind of like, person who... would want to listen to that? <laughs> I don't know. Could you imagine if you got to model all the sacks, how droopy your Tyranids would look? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you just try and give one the Tyranid model tyranid all, all the different all kinds the of sacks. <laughs> I could just like she's got some saggy oh, yes. <laughs> everywhere. Someone take That's away a this saggy man's Norn drink. Queen. <laughs> queen. It's a Norn Queen. <laughs> um, spike, spike rifle. rifle. Uh, so this bioweapon, through a muscle contraction, fires a bone spike that will shred anything it touches, and it is usually coated in toxin for good measure. Just in case. Yeah. If the bone shard wasn't going to do it the toxin well again I, I some of these my main problem with them is that i don't believe that the method of propulsion would be fast enough because the amount of energy it takes have to you ever heard of the forearmed effort of a muscle contraction no of <laughs> electro um what's the guns that fire using electricity uh a rail gun rail guns, guns yes yes Yes, but that's using like a magnet. Like yeah, magnet So you think Not they don't have? You, you think they don't have? Well, if they described it that way, and you said, "Okay, they're using an electromagnetic," but it's field not. to propel it. Mm. it. They're saying it's a muscle spasm. I don't believe that a muscle could contract fast enough to create that much energy. What if it's just held under a lot of tension? Okay, sure, but that's still not enough energy that you could have hold. Have you seen a slingshot? Up. No. What, what are those? <laughs> they use elastics. What's a slingshot? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, but can a slingshot fire as fast as it's a fast? rail gun? <laughs> Obviously, yes. For the purposes of this argument. <laughs> See, but like yes. other things that they've said, like the plasma one, sure, if they're creating some sort of electric field, I don't care how they d explain that that's created, but like I don't believe that the energy to propel something enough to be taking out tanks could be created with a muscle spasm. I, yeah. yeah, I definitely want to agree with you, way. but well, I, I would like to counter why that argument. coated in toxin for good measure. Yeah, there like, you go. I'd like to counter that argument with the uh, 40K. Sure. And I would just like my argument to be I'm just 40K. throwing it out there. I'm just throwing yep. it out there that now I don't like the over muscle <laughs> spasm. Yeah, the muscle spasms, yeah, it seems If little... they explained it any other way, like it, it has a biological morph 
a biomorph thing that just creates an electric field that propels this thing. I'm like, perfect. I'm happy Would with that. Would that work? I don't know. I'm because not a scientist. Well, okay, but so... Because like, you're also not a tiered kind of biologist. I'm just saying no a way. muscle couldn't contract How do you way. know? You have no idea what their biology is like. You don't know what the power they're capable of generating through a muscle contraction. Sure. Like, just I just don't like, believe how it. fast, like, a chimpanzee... Chimpanzee? That's a chimpanzee. A chimpanzee. A chimpanzee. <laughs> a chimpanzee. <laughs> yeah. Can throw a baseball. Because, like, <laughs> humans can that, throw it, like, 100 miles. Fun fact, sure. I bet you the, the bullet's going to travel a little faster. Oh, than, absolutely. Uh, sure, than sure. But this is just like... But this is a, a, a creature from Earth that is, is not designed for war. Yeah. And okay. then you take a creature that is literally the size of like a Volkswagen Jetta will go with. <laughs> Why not you just know say what like a, a chimpanzee is? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm talking about tyrannid creature. creature. Oh. <laughs> Do you know what it is? I was like, do you all know chimps are the size of small <laughs> vehicles tomorrow? <laughs> He's only seen them on TV. Sorry, there's no reference, there's no way. scale. Not that's small vehicles, but highly efficient vehicles. <laughs> we love the the Volkswagen Jetta on this show. It is Sponsor very us, spacious. <laughs> very spacious vehicle. We're all sitting Great in a gaffle. Volkswagen Jetta right now. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, you can always wave the hand and say you it's can. it's it's something that you don't understand because obviously I'm no biologist. <laughs> that is the. I'm whole... just saying, I don't believe that. I wish they would have used anything else to wa- that hand wave. You, you yes, would like it sure. to be a more of a sci-fi where they use crazy language that doesn't make any sense to explain something rather than fantasy where you're supposed to just believe in the impossible. Sure. I, if you say it's magic, if they were said I it was magic, magic, I would be like, sure. If they were like warp sorcery is what propels these, I'd be like, yeah, okay. But muscle spasms just seems a little it's silly. Just, when you say muscle spasms, you're relating it to something I understand in order to make it work yes we are <laughs> but the so the method is something you understand you understand muscle spasms but what you don't understand sure. is when a 2000 pound creature creates a muscle spasm specifically i've seen a rhino and i don't think the a rhino's muscle spasm. a rhino isn't we're, designed you know what? fair enough fair enough we're not no, gonna no, like, we're I, not gonna agree like no, I, we're not. I understand well, you're wrong i understand what you're saying the best part about like this it. Is, is like somebody heard us like talking about this for one minute they're like fuck this so they skip ahead one minute we're still talking about it. <laughs> Fuck this. They skip ahead 10 minutes. They're still talking about this. <laughs> Muscle spasms can't shoot things. <laughs> yeah, and every skip it's progressively angrier. Yeah. And angrier. Muscle spasms can't shoot things? Come Never on. Never heard of his cack. That's right. <laughs> God! How fast? I've been defeated. I know you've seen you know it. What? That's, that's, we're not defeated. even going to get into this. How fast can... Spine bags? Oh, God. How fast can it's a It's 25 ejaculate? miles an hour. Yeah, I already know. Is it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Ten yeah. miles per hour. Oh, that's oh, wrong. That's some weak sperm. Yeah, that's really weak. Maybe that's an average. Mm. That's a lot of Asian people. I think yeah. the, I think <laughs> the average. I'm pretty sure the average yeah. is around twenty. <laughs> but that's that's a small muscle. At least on me. I don't. <laughs> I don't think. All right. So. Okay. Fine, thanks. <laughs> okay. Let's go back to Tiernids. Now that I, this has been a very derailed. <laughs> Yeah. There's only so much you can do with biomorphs. <laughs> we're, we're making it interesting for you. We're talking about sperm and ejaculation, and we're making it fun. Uh, all right. Uh, Killing spine teenagers. Killing teenagers. <laughs> I'm about to kill some more right now. That's right. Uh, these are like spike rifles, but they're formed into rows and embedded into the carapace of creatures. So kind of like, um, like how... Uh, Terminators or Dreadnoughts have like rocket pods on their back. Yeah. This functions in a similar way, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's where there's spines that shoot out of the back. Oh, if you have trypophobia, you should probably get into these. Mm, yeah. Get deep into these. <sighs> Let the mouths to shoot, shoot out at you. <laughs> Nathan sounds so uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, how about this one? Spine fists. This is a good mesh- mesh- method of propulsion. The bioweapon you- which its own air bladder uses its own air bladder to the airways of the host via a long tube like tail that burrows through the host's limb into their torso. The spine fists, lethally poisonous spines, are coated with neurotoxins, which assault the nervous system of the victims and are fired by a sharp exhalation. Exhalation. So, of the host. Okay, so they're, they're on the fist. <laughs> they're on the fist, but it, it's through breath. <laughs> Because yeah. the fist actually has a tube connected to the lung. Yeah. 
that's really cool it's like a blow dart it's cool nothing is not it's not as often that things aren't cool mm. and that one is more They're believable just less believable yeah that one is more believable i accept that there's some sort of air propulsion that shoots these things that's that's i mean sense. like we shoot paintballs with like co2 canisters and those are pretty fast for like airsoft guns right yeah and like and more the design of it too makes sense like it's some sort of needle that's getting propelled by a, you wouldn't need as much force to move that yeah for sure sure fucking loser <laughs> spore cysts so Ooh. spore cysts are pods that will grow and release spore mines mm-hmm. what am i what are the spore mines spore mines are just like these uh Think of like jellyfish, but that can float. Jellyfish, 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 um, and they just Take float some around. Jelly, it's different types, so like fish. they just float around aimlessly, and mm. if they sense movement, they'll explode. And there's like acid ones, so there's venom ones, so there's cool. toxic ones, so there's frag ones. So like they, they're just, full of spine shards. Yeah, yeah. So this just grows on their back, and then when a fully mature one is made, it just drifts off the back and. Okay, Onto forgive my tyrannid ignorance. Are these the little mo- models with like the little clump on the top and yep. like the tendrils hanging yep. out? Oh, uh, okay. yeah. Yep. Gotcha. Spore mines. Spore mine launcher. This bioweapon through a muscle spasm Redacted. <laughs> is able to lob spore mines over vast distances. Well, this one makes sense because it doesn't Because they're so speeds. light. Yeah, and it doesn't need speed. It yeah. just needs to lob. Yep. They're, they are poisonous, explosive, and acidic spores. Yeah. It's kind of cool. It's like setting up a, it's like <coughs> setting up a minefield or like a mortar, right? So. Yep strangle web uh so this is a spider-like creature that fires a sticky mesh of mucus-like strands and that they ensnare a target and then it quickly shrinks and hardens to immobilize it so the hive mind deploy these when trying to catch specific creatures for bio splicing Ooh, Mm -hmm. we're gonna cut this creature in half and attach it to a a tyranid Mm -hmm. and hey you gotta cut yourself a (laughs) stew you got yourself a stew yeah more more for like absorbing their dna specifically but, uh, yeah. yeah, better better to be absorbed with intention than this, just go in the soup. Yeah, yeah This exactly. next one fulfills all my fantasies. Read it out. The tentaclid. Ooh. I imagine suction cups. This orgasm, I mean organism. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, this organism is living missile that will detach from the host and fly towards enemy aircraft, exploding in a bioelectric pulse blast. Mm-hmm. Just reaching up to the sky. <laughs> this is one of the few ones too that, like, uh, if you look at the the model of it, looks like its own creature. Like they're they're pretty big, and you can actually see the creature itself, see the biomorph. Um, yeah, where like a gun, it, it it's a creature, but it looks like a gun. It's a weird one, but these ones look like, yeah, they're pretty cool. Hmm. Cool, almost like squids. They look like flying squigs. <laughs> squids. Squids so, or squigs. Squigs. Squid. Squids. <laughs> <laughs> Two are saying the same thing but different, and I don't know which one it is. Squid, squid. So that uh, that pretty much covers the range biomorphs. Mm-hmm. Now we got now eighteen or so melee ones, but these ones will be quick. They're, they're, they're fucking whatever. Bone sword. <laughs> is that gonna increase the speed? <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had some caffeine and I don't normally have caffeine, so I feel like I'm ready to go. Ooh. So we got a drunk, we got a caffeine holic. Nathan, what's your uh, what's your poison? poison? Oh, crippling drug addiction. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not see him just literally shoot up heroin? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my. Or you, that line of cocaine he's literally <laughs> sniffing right now. Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah. There we go. Let's <laughs> fucking talk about <laughs> biomorphs. Let's do this. <laughs> All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about for melee is the bone sword. Um, ah, yes, the bone sword. So I will read the first point. Perfect. As written. Monomolecular, 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 mm-hmm. monomolecular, monomolecular. Mon- you true. know what? I'm going to quit there because there's about 10 more lines <laughs> of that. It's a mono- monomolecular weapon. We know how much 40K likes these. Oh, my Mono- God. But wait. Molecular. <laughs> exact. But wait, there's also a brain in the hilt of the sword. <laughs> hey. You um, leave the brain hilt alone. James. <laughs> it makes sense. I'm going with so it. So does this weapon also like, like shoot out and attack? Yeah, things? this sword like it does no, it itself. No, no, no and this can one it does also, not. Also, when the host dies, snake around Crawl the battlefield, <laughs> doing no, still attacking people. No, <laughs> but, but uh, why the not? <laughs> Give us answers, Mark. <laughs> Have you ever we seen demand. anime? Swords can do that. 
<laughs> it's art. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and she's real, okay? <laughs> my waifu is real. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so the, the the brain and the sword controls two parts. Uh, one part is controlling the, the growth and repairing the sword itself. But the brain will also generate powerful psychic energies that flow along uh, embedded nerve tendrils to create a psychic field around the blade. So is, it, cool. is this the... Um, power version power sword version of for tyranids so this like disrupts sure. is it like a psychic thing or is it like a, re a disruptive field yeah it's a disruptive field okay um, but it's just like, psychically no, based yeah there's no psychic uh because rules the, for it like you're not using this in the psychic phase or anything like no that. no no but th it's like their version of the power sword yeah. right okay essentially so it just disrupts matter allowing the bone sword to slice through things yeah cool yeah here's a good one Claws and teeth. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much exactly what it sounds like, people. Sharp claws, big teeth. You got it. Made for ripping and tearing. Ripping and tearing and gnashing and mawn. Yep. Crushing claws. Giant crab-like claws capable of crushing tanks. I, pretty, I feel like they stole this one from the Striking Scorpion. <laughs> I don't love how these look on the models. I think they look a little silly. They're just like giant crab claws, essentially. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. Personally. Could've. What do you like? Like the talons better? Yeah, I like mm. the siding talons more. Sure, 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 sure. Yes. Feeder tendrils. Enormous tentacles used by some Tyranid bioships to feed on planetary atmospheres, like straws. <laughs> they can also be used <laughs> as weapons against enemy vehicles. Give me some of that atmosphere. <laughs> That's dead dead atmosphere. I'm delicious. <laughs> <laughs> The tentacles are strong Gotta enough to punch through. Gotta give me some through. of that atmosphere. <laughs> Why don't you get that sweet atmosphere oh, over here? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> come on up in here. Get some sweet atmosphere. Hey, hey John, you gotta come try this atmosphere. <laughs> oh, on my way. <laughs> <laughs> what the? God, we've been doing this for too long. Ooh. I'm not, I've just been drinking. <laughs> Barely at that. Actually, okay. is that your second? No. no! Oh my god, you haven't even drunk one! He's okay, half it's a freaking. Beer. It's early. It sucks drinking. It's I know why it's not in a the thing. morning. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason. It's not great. Well, also, the social aspect is. Yeah, you look kind of like a bum, but that's okay. What do you mean, look? None of us have any illusions that you're anything other than a bum liquor pig. A bum sure. liquor pig. A bum liquor pig. <laughs> bum liquor pig. I'm just a bum liquor now. <laughs> no. Well, you're a pig that licks yeah. bums. <laughs> specifically okay mm -hmm. or is it a pig <laughs> bum liquor no pig. no you're a bum you're a, liquor pig do I, yeah. do I you're a pig lick, bum bums licks. pigs no <laughs> or pigs bums whatever you want to do in your own time james it's up to you you're like actually pigs bum <laughs> warhammer does not endorse this yeah. level of relationship <laughs> that james may or may not have with pigs <laughs> i'm not jewish <laughs> I can do it well. <laughs> because they Peter can't tendrils. eat pigs. Oh my god! <laughs> so they definitely can't lick their butthole. Actually, we don't. We don't know that. Well, yeah, I suppose. I'm just assuming that I when, feel you, like just when you assume, you make an ass out of me. <laughs> I just feel like most people choose not to lick pigs' buttholes. Mm -hmm. as like a right. If anyone's offended by this, you can direct all complaints <laughs> to, to our HR I James. James. <laughs> His email is yams at yams. hotmail dot com. <laughs> yams. Gene Steeler Jim. Gene Steeler Jim at hotmail dot com. Oh God. Uh, all emails there. Okay. Feeder uh, tendrils. We already went over those. <laughs> the tentacles are strong enough to punch through a ship's hull and inject small or organisms into it to run amok, okay. causing enormous damage to the ship's critical systems. Again, I know we how, how we talked about it. It's like for adaptability, they have these biomass, but this seems like something that should just be part of the ship. Yeah. Like, but not all ships. Why would all ships need this? But like the ones that are why performing not? this task, well, why, that's why, why isn't it just a part of them? Yeah, yeah. I agree with you completely. Well, no, because I don't know okay. why you'd need a another organism to be attached think, onto a ship that's okay. absorbing an atmosphere. I might have a reason for this. So think of like the Lehman Russ, right? That is an extremely... Um, universal chassis right there are lehman russes designed for so many different things and they all have very specific like things that they excel at and that they're designed for just like these 
every single Tyranid hive ship might be born the same way, and then some are designated to do this, and some are designated to sure, transport, but if and some if, are designated. If you're doing it that way, why don't they do it just like how every other biological organism chooses gender? You just start growing them that way. Well, why this is why very, attach on a tendril that's because, grown separately? Because this is very targeted and intentional, and there's I'm nothing random about it. I'm just going to criticize everything about these. That's my Tyranids are dumb! And I hate them. They're too scary. They <laughs> scare me. I don't like all the tentacles and the I, acid. Well, hold on. I do like the tentacles. <laughs> but not the acid. Hold on. <laughs> the tentacles, acid I could do without. Tentacles, the tentacles are tentacles okay. Are <laughs> Anime's art. <laughs> lash whips. More tentacles. All right. So a lash whip is a creature whose body is made of two parts. The first part is a small body contained within a bony tube, which forms the handle of the whip. And the other part is three tentacles that end in hooks. Uh, the three tentacles of muscle and sinew writhe of their own accord and strike at their prey. They will either shred into pieces or entangle and entrap their enemies. Another complaint about okay. this <laughs> is that I'm so glad we brought you, you on. If you just like stuck that on the Tyranid's body somewhere instead of in their hand, yeah. their hand could be doing something independent instead of yeah. just holding. Well, it then back. it becomes something else. Isn't that like most of these though? Like the cannons, you could stick it on a Tyranid's shoulder, yeah, and then they could still yes. have their hands to be doing. Sure, but there are things. Stuff. There are the ones like that. Yeah. So th it's just a different okay, biome. Sure. Like, all right, I'll stop complaining. So now. Ripper tentacles. I like it personally. Right? I'll, I'll stop. Flesh hooks. Like if they're on your chest, then they're flesh hooks now, and sure, they're that not seems lash. more helpful. Right, but there's but. It just you don't know what creature I know is capable. Okay, <laughs> all right. The Tyranid hive out. mind needs to call me up, and we'll have a chat. And <laughs> yeah. I'll help him out. I can help him out. <laughs> Give him some pointers. Here's how we increase efficiency. <laughs> Take my card. <laughs> Put some stuff on some shoulders. Yeah, Get those hands free. For hand I could. I could swear there's. <laughs> I like can those you stop gestures. Doing the, yeah. <laughs> Makes me uncomfortable. Ooh, Tyranids okay. are going skiing. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Eric's yep. doing the motion. He's Skiing. processing. Yeah, I, he gets it. Yeah. <laughs> it's clicked. Eric's disgusted. <laughs> uh, <laughs> our next biomorph is rending claws. I I always love saying rendering claws to my one friend. Uh, Who's that? John. Oh, John's John. a man. <laughs> rendering John, claws. who is a a Tyranid fan, he's yeah. a big bug freak. Oh, okay. Rendering, rendering claws. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do the claws do? Render things. Exactly. <laughs> they make it so the hive mind can see better. <laughs> no. Oh, that's the render you took. I'm talking like rendering fat. That's what oh, I was thinking. Well, oh. okay, you can tell that Schultz and I are in software because I also did <laughs> yeah. rendering as in a computer. <laughs> Weird, because that's not how I meant it. Well, language. I saw this one cartoon. It's like this guy is like... Uh, Language is powerful. I can say a string of words that are completely unrelated and directly implant thoughts into someone's head. And then this, like, he skateboards past this adult and he says, G purple giraffe print pimp. And then it shows a balloon of what that guy's thinking. It's a purple giraffe who is dressed up as a pimp. And then the guy on the skateboard looks at the frame and he says, I refuse to use this responsibly. <laughs> <laughs> so you can force people to think things by saying words. Oh my God. Power. In that's the, your right. Yeah. Okay. That's your right. Rendering claws. Dense diamond hard claws capable of rendering all but the thickest armor. <laughs> Making it much clearer for your vision. <laughs> like I Scything talons. Long talons made of chitin with a sharp or point, chitin. point capable of piercing an object with one side having a sharp edge. The other side of the talon is covered in chitin plates used for parrying attacks. I think these are so cool. They look great. Yeah. They look yeah. amazing. They make me think of Scyther. Yeah. No, they that's, do. Yeah. It's perfect. Except, you know, if Scyther was like a badass monstrosity from the 40. I mean, it, I mean, he definitely is like a bug already, so. Yeah. Oh, my God. The Tyranids have infiltrated Pokemon. And Scyther's Gotta evolution has... Oh, my God. <laughs> What yeah. are you doing? I can bumped you, the table. Can you no, can you not you drink so drunk? much? <laughs> you alcoholic. God. <laughs> We're going to get you home to your wife. She's going to be so disappointed in us. <laughs> it's fine. I She's already to... disappointed in me. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Every time I bring up 40K, my girlfriend is very disappointed in me. <laughs> and Again, the choices I've made. I thought we worked through this. <laughs> You're like, that was for the one model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I stopped playing with the one model. <laughs> 
All right. Tail mace. A huge clump of flesh on the end of a tail. It is used like a wrecking ball. It's, think like an ankylosaurus. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Very, very approved. Tail scythe. A tail that ends in a scything talon. Less approved. <laughs> <laughs> tail. Uh, a nose scythe. Head scythe. Your tail scythe. bio Your cannon. Scythe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How this many how many more things can we attach scythes to? This bioweapon shoots th- scythes. <laughs> <laughs> this chest cavity is filled with scythes <laughs> <laughs> that just literally drop out of the There's no propulsion. It just, it just, it just like spew scythes. Yeah. <laughs> the tyranny, like the hive mind is a little drunk that <laughs> <laughs> just starts po- popping out like weird Oh my god, things. that would be hilarious. <laughs> That's like Greg, the Alpha Legion, his name is George, and he's like a Carnifex, but his chest opens up and spews size. Yeah, and he's so, em- he's so embarrassed about yeah. it. <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry it happened again. <laughs> I was picking him up. Yeah, I put him in the bad <laughs> always puts him at the front of the battle to try and kill him, but all the space screens think it's hilarious. So his muscle spasms, like, aren't strong yeah. enough, yeah. so everything like, it just like, <laughs> like the, the bone shard comes out, but lands like a foot in front of him. The hive the hive mind like pulls back the rest of the <laughs> army except for him. Yeah. Yeah. Go, 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 go! You can do it. You got it. Uh, okay, <laughs> and then the very last biomorph we have today is tusked. So this is an adamantium laced chitin that protrudes from the mouth and is used for goring enemies. Perfect. Is okay. So they can make metal. Well, they could absorb they, it, I guess. They so eat they, it, right? So, so if they can absorb metal, then they could make just rail guns. So, <laughs> like, we have iron in our body. Fucking nids, you ever heard of rail guns? <laughs> we have iron like, in our bodies, jumps. right? This is a real thing. <laughs> like, instead of bone weapons, they could just have yeah, rail they could, guns. They could create magnetic fields. They could make magnetic and fields and to shoot. Well, technically, Metal every objects. living thing creates magnetic fields. But, like, a powerful... A powerful a magnetic field to okay. shoot an electrically charged metal object. You might be think- overthinking this. At insanely high speeds. Yeah. And then your bone, your bone I- spear no longer needs to have bone in it. Bone <laughs> or poison. It's going to just evaporate whatever's can, in front of can it. Can I still have scything talons, so. though? Yes. 100%. Of course. Perfect. Always Perfect. have scything talons. Good. But good, you can good. launch those, too, at electrically <laughs> pulse speed. So George's yes. chest cavity now, filled with scything talons, actually has a purpose? Yeah. yeah. Just attached rail guns to so, it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a rail gun now. A rail gun <laughs> chest cavity. It's a rail gun <laughs> shotgun of scything <laughs> talons made of metal. <laughs> Look at the spread on that bag. <laughs> well, when they spread apart, it's because he wins. He just wins <laughs> fights for you. Yeah. I, like, they definitely consume metal, at the very least because there's trace amounts of metal in every living being. Sure. Yeah. sure. But, but like, like, do they, like, will they eat, like, a, yes, they, like, they, a Lehman Russ? They, they do. Absorb okay. It? In the Desolation of Ball, when they're absorbing planets on their way to Ball, the Tyranids definitely suck up metal and absorb it. Yeah. So then they I could easily create. I yeah, think. Like, I think they need it though, like to reinforce their chitin and their bones with. Like they strengthen. Does chitin have metal in it though? I don't think it. Like not significant quantities. Yeah, but imagine how many creatures they're creating. Sure. They need okay. a lot of metal sure. to to reinforce that. I don't know. All I'm saying is, rail guns are, I would assume, better than bone. Bone, guns. Bone, bone bone shooters <laughs> that are shot with a muscle spasm. Yeah. <laughs> I would hope the railgun goes a little faster. I could be wrong, but <laughs> the, I just know that Tyranids do absorb metal in large quantities, yeah. and they look well, like, for it. Yeah, even like if a card effects attacks a tank and chomps down on it, it eats that tank. Like sure, now that metal's in his stomach, and eventually he'll get absorbed. And but like I, I think they need it just for their growth. Like, I, I don't know if they're... And I don't know if they're capable of growing pure metal. Yeah. And also, like... Because uh, like, it's all carbon-based life, right? Well, yeah. they can't grow metal. Well, then how how would they... They don't have forges. Everything is done through well, growing. You could, you could assume that there's some way of processing metal. So he- here's, I you think, could. the answer, though. If I have to assume as much as I have to assume already, <laughs> can I not just Can assume? I not assume the better things? Yeah. yeah. No, I just don't think the hive mind 
is intelligent in that regard. Like, yeah, it, it's it not is a not scientific techno- mind. Exactly, yeah. it's not. It's an evolution mind. Yeah. Well, I think it, it doesn't understand how to make a rail gun. Sure, like it a, understands how to like, meld DNA together. It yeah. figured it out how saying. to make like plasma. But that's plasma. It's plasma to us because that's the closest thing we have to it. But it is nothing like regular plasma. It's vomit. Right. Yeah. But like right? also, yeah. It just has okay. a, a similar okay. effect. Exactly. Fair enough. Maybe yeah. it's so not that smart that's enough. kind of why like I they don't use bullets. Bullets. It's just not that type of smart. Sure. It's like, like me, you know, like I'm super street absorb. smart, <laughs> but no, but I can't read. Can. But they can. Yeah. <laughs> There's two conversations happening right now. Mark and I are engaged in one, and Eric and Schultz are engaged in one. They're not meeting. That's fine. Whatever. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's that they're not smart enough. That's actually probably the fair, I guess. Yeah, because it has, like a, it has like that a tactical genetic mind. Yeah. It doesn't have, it can't create technology. It doesn't create tools. Yeah. It just, you could assume that its brain isn't structured in, or its mind rather isn't structured in a way that allows for that type of development. Yeah, sure. exactly. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, that is our list of Tyranid biomorphs that we care to share. Yeah. Uh, our next Tyranid episodes are going to be, we're going to talk about synapse creatures, and the next one after that will be non-synapse. But now that we know all these different types of biomorphs, when we actually talk about a hive tyrant has scything talons, hopefully you remember all this stuff. Yeah, hopefully you've retained every single every piece of information, of information that, that we've important. shared. It's important. It is hot in this room. <laughs> it's are you pregnant? What's going on? <laughs> no, it's menopause. Oh, okay. oh, I don't know, but he's having hot flashes. Hot flashes? It's so hot right now. <laughs> don't has, worry, it passes in a couple. Of Have years. a nice cold beer, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> it's only nine in the morning. Well, at this point, it's noon. Oh, God. Let's, yeah, let's go play some Warhammer. Yeah, I guess let's talk a little bit about our uh, tournament. Yeah, we're going to be doing a tournament. We're doing a little beer league. We're just going to go get drunk and play Warhammer. We're doing... Um, well, me and Eric are. Yeah, it's a two-on-two uh, tournament, so you have to join... You have to have a partner. Both of you are bringing 1,400 points in a single detachment. Um, so I'm playing my Necron, mm-hmm. and we rolled for it, and Nathan and I are teaming up, and Nathan, you're bringing... Custodes. Cust- custards. Custodes. Custodes. Custards. The, cus- the golden custards. The, golden the janitors bananas. of the empire. Mm-hmm. Custodes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm bringing the bananas. And then <laughs> James and Mark, you guys are teaming up. Mm-hmm. I'm taking my towel. Yeah, I'm bringing some dark angels. Oof. Yeah. Should be fun. This yeah. is. No, this I'm is, super excited. It's the first tournament I've ever joined. It. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. For all of us. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I'm uh, looking forward to it. Yeah. It's forcing be. me to paint models. Have you? Uh, is please. it? For- <laughs> please base it. It should too. be forcing it's you. Compelling you. Yeah. Have you though? Yeah. yeah. Are you going to be done them all? Ah, uh, they should all be painted. I don't know about based. So, what, oh. what's the penalties for basing? <laughs> for not having your model based? What's the penalty? I think it's uh, preferred enemy in combat. Is that what it is? Yeah. Are you sure? And I think the if it's unpainted, you re-roll successful armor saves. Yeah, they're suicide squads or whatever they're called. That's yeah. so funny. <laughs> Like my Necron are getting in close combat, so relax. Preferred enemy is... <laughs> you're, you just re-roll wounds or re-roll hits, I think. You're scared. Oh. No, yeah. not scarabs. Wraiths. Wraiths are. Face them, please. <laughs> <laughs> my God. Yeah, so, so I'd get to re-roll all wound and hit rolls against your wraiths? If yeah, I think based. you get one or the other. I don't think it's both. It's going to be calm when we play them. Play. If he doesn't paint them, you'll he has to reroll all failed saves. All on, successful saves. All successful saves. So I'd have to reroll we're playing my today and we're saves. just going to fucking waste them. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, we're fucked. Yeah, it'll be interesting. But like, yeah. we built our list to be fucked. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm not, I love that when people suck at something. So they're like, I intentionally suck at it. So they, <laughs> they suck even more just so they... We did it so that we don't have to play against night players in the tournament. Uh-huh. uh-huh. I mean, yeah. It's, yeah, because yeah, the, the tournament... Uh, organizer so, said that he's gonna like make rate each army. Yeah, he's yeah. gonna put, pit you against people who are similar as far as he's concerned. S- similar danger levels. Yeah, yeah, which is why I'm in with Mark so that mine looks or our list looks less angry. Mm-hmm. I'm bringing down the power level of our army. Oh, Mark's Me not too. bringing any riptides, so yeah, yeah that's you're true. Fine. You yeah, we'll yeah fine. like my we'll list is put in very deceiving. Bottom. Yeah, we'll yeah, get we'll, put at the bottom. What the fuck? Yeah, cow breachers, devil fishes. What are you doing? 
You're gonna He's get, a madman. Get smoked game <laughs> one. I think like your list is is just very good. No, I don't know. It's if just it's good. It's not hard. To, it's hard to understand. Where, yeah, it's a where weird. The it's so like normally against how you know exactly what's going on. There's big things. There's drones protecting those big things, and there's small pockets of guys everywhere. You know what? You're gonna soak a lot of shots into that big thing, and maybe you're gonna take out its drones. Maybe not. But like you're gonna ignore all the guys on the field, and I don't know. It's like normally Tao is not super hard to understand, but your things are just weird. They're just weird. <laughs> I, I think it'll depend on who yeah who you go up against. Yeah. If yeah, you go I up against know. a night player, I, I'll, we're all fucked. I guess. Oh, oh, of course we are. No. You see, oh, yeah. I don't know. Because no, uh, we'll I have fine. some... Against we're a Crusader. Fucking waste in that. We'll fucking waste that thing turn one. No problem. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think we we'll definitely will. 30 wounds. Long, four long up strike in goes down turn one against a knight. And then it's mm, just... If not. he knows. And then it's just a tank per... If he knows. If he knows to go for long no, strike. We'll, we'll fucking waste a knight turn one. Absolutely. Every fucking time. I'm just going to take some of your... Turn one. Turn one every How? Time. Oh, I don't know. Ten plasma gun guys... Three hammerheads. No, he the, a thousand the table. Fucking seeker the missiles. table is seventy two inches, and the range is what thirty six on those. Thirty, thirty depends he, on how he puts that depends thing on the what the setup is. He's we'll not going to put a crusader okay. knight at the back. Why it not? Had, the range like, of the volcano can is seventy inches. Yeah, but you're oh, not. Okay. Gonna, if someone brings, well, crusaders, no, they they no, are, the they're crusader uh, seventy two for a battle cannon. cannon, which is nothing. Like the battle cannon is not the threat, and then the avenger is thirty six. Mm. So he'll be at the front, but that's fine. It's a four up in one. It's not. It's good. It's just fucking it's wasted. Turn, turn one. That's some confidence. Trust yeah, me. That is some confidence. Yeah. I wouldn't be as confident, but <laughs> that's fine. I think the, adva- the advantage of our list would just be like target priority for someone who hasn't played our armies before might be. Yeah, yeah. I'll have no idea what to go for. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, and in same kind of with you. Well, no, no for, 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 you, it's, for, 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 for like Eric, your army. The target priority for Necron is very, very obvious for everyone yes. who's ever played them before. Super obvious. It's very scarabs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually got rid of the scarabs. Then what the fuck am I going to shoot? Wraith. Do I even have to play the game, or are you just going to give me you a win? win? You just okay, win. Okay, interesting. <laughs> uh, actually, you don't get the instant win because your guys will not have line of sight. <laughs> That's true. You just hide scarabs randomly around the <laughs> battlefield, and then what's yeah, the, what's veil of darkness them systems? into hiding spots <laughs> everywhere? Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Our list isn't good. That's no. For sure. it, it'll be fun. I'm it's excited. Be so fun. I'm excited to play this tournament. We're gonna drink some beer, eat some pizza, meet some new people. Yeah, we're gonna wear our lorehammer shirts. I think. I, I'm very happy that that's why you want to go because I was worried that you were going to... Well, I wasn't worried you are going to want to win because you play... I play Necron. Necron. Oh, I'm glad but, the teams worked out like yeah, that because I want to win. <laughs> yeah, exactly, I to win. Exactly. And I was like, I'm not going to no, win. No, I'm just looking to have a good time. Oh, it's, yeah. It's my first good time. Yeah, it's my first time when I win. Experience. Yeah. <laughs> the next tournament I play, I think in August, I think you might be going to Mark at Ogre's Den? I might be, yeah. I'm, I'm, eh? I'm going to I'm gonna go for that points. one. Like, I'm going to go all out. I'm doing... I think I'm going to do Thousand Suns, and I'm going to try for best in... Well, I won't get best in faction, but that's going to be my goal, is to try and do as well as I can for best in faction. Grey Knights. TS. Thousand Suns. I'm going to do Grey Knights. Yeah, so you get it, because no one... No one plays Grey Knights. (laughs) Good job. You already have it! Yes! Bravo! (laughs) Steve Holt! I don't, do a lot of people play Dark Angels? I don't see them very often. No, most people don't play Space Marines. Yeah, in so maybe I can get that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just pick the niche armies nobody plays because they never win. <laughs> Someone take Eric Snackron because again, no, I think Necron actually show up in most tournaments. Yeah, they yeah. just don't do. There's well. a lot of there's like a decent fan base devoted to Necron. They've been around for a long time. Yeah, and they had they've they've always had like even great interesting. Nights. They're story. still. There's still people who play them. It's just yes. not. They as... never show up in like the top. No. Yeah, but they're they still there's they're still, still a presence in the, yeah in tournaments. So I'm sorry, any Grey Knight players or even they might be dark dark angels. I'm sure. Stuff. The thing about Space yeah. Marines is that even if they play Space Marines, what's the chance that they're playing Dark Angels instead of Blood Angels or Ultramarines? Yeah. Or Black Templar. Well, right? There's so many different the, kinds. There's, there's the th- there's only three. Right. There's Blood Angels. And then the general Space Marine Codex, and then there's Dark Angels. But I'm saying you can. There's an infinite number. But even of in chapters. the general Space Marine Codex, you would still have to choose a chapter, tactic, yes. chapter, tactic. Yeah, but which best I think in faction would, would be by codex, isn't it? 
I don't know about the general Space Marine one. Same with like Chaos. Like I don't know if general Chaos you could choose pick and choose your legions, or if you just had to choose one legion. I think best in faction would probably be by Codex. No, I don't think so because it's a faction, and your faction is Adeptus Maybe. Astartes. Well, then you could just say your I'm just going to be the super obscure rule set for like you Iron could. Hands or something to get best in faction. And? That seems lame. All right, fair enough. <laughs> so, like, you just have to make sure you're a different dynasty than the other. No, Necron no, no, because players? I'm playing against all the other Necron. Okay, but why would you? Why and would you're competing make? against all the other Adeptus Astartes to find the best in faction? Okay, so it's always co Space Marines is best. Yes, in faction. like okay. which Space Marine is the best faction? Right? Like, yeah. Actually, is it your Space uh, Marine uh, army, or is I it? I'm know. so confused. Like, I, like, I think you're <laughs> you're also competing against Black Templar. Like, who's the best oh, okay. Space Marine? Sure. I actually don't right? know because. I like thousand be suns i don't think compete against just general space black Chaos legion space marine. no i don't think so i would assume that would be best and like gray knights be don't codex. gray knights don't compete with other space marine legions they just compete with other gray they don't players. compete well they don't well they don't yeah <laughs> got them yeah okay. okay but yeah so i actually don't think that's hmm. the way it is interesting but it could be that We'll like see. Space frame players all. We'll see. I mean, I might join that tournament too, although I have no hopes about doing you well can't. on that one. Is it already booked? No, because you guys said that you were away that weekend. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I might know. ditch my wife. <laughs> no, it's not that. It was. Oh, that's camping. camping. Yeah. But with the fires, I don't know if we'll want to do yeah, that. Yeah. So. Well, Mark can't do it anyway because it's a 2,000 point list. Mm hmm. No, he, he doesn't go over 1,500. No, he's not. Over 1,500. He doesn't play over that. No. Oh, so you're not going. Oh, it's Apparently just going to be not. me. No, I'll come watch you the whole time. Sure. I'll hang out. I might play, though. I'll come play. I might play with my knights, go to a tournament and play with the knights. That could be something. What? Can I roll my eyes harder? <gasps> you Why? can bring your por Porphyrian. Ooh, yeah, exactly. That would be cool. That would be so That would be, that'd be so cool to see him cool. on the field. Yeah. Porphyrian. It's... It... It could take every like, night a turn. The, the thing, easy. The thing we're doing with this beer league, it's it's supposed to be super friendly. Yeah. But yeah, if you're going to like an actual tournament, you're gonna bring a, a gross list. Otherwise, what's the point of going? You're just gonna for sure. It. Well, no, I I it, understand what you're saying. Like, like the only thing is my there's I don't think there's a gross list in Primaris only armies. Oh yeah, no. Like so, unless you did like Bobby G all and Whirlwinds is pretty gross. Well, you couldn't do all Hell Blasters. You can only do three squads. Bobby G. You can there, do as many as you know. Yeah, you can do thirty. You could. You could only do hellblasters. thirty hellblasters because they follow hell. the rule of three. That is a and lot yeah, of hellblasters. Yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, what, that wouldn't be good. What's thirty though? hellblasters cost? That's a lot of points. That's it's a lot of points, but that's not a good list. No, oh, that's a good list. No, it's not. It has cool. destructive power, but it doesn't have like. If you're gonna go, it doesn't to have a, mobility. Yeah. No, if you're right? gonna go to a tourney, I think you take Bobby G, some rhinos maybe. Or no, some like, sorry, whirlwinds, I think they're called, because they're like the line of sight. No, you just take aggressors and redemptors. <laughs> I don't think you know what you mean. You the they're the bit. Nope. I said what I meant. Redemptor dreadnoughts and aggressors. That's all. Uh -huh. Oh, redemptor dreadnoughts are just trash. <laughs> you, take so you take three of them. You take three of those. <laughs> and then what? And, well, then, and then you cry. 18 the aggressors. <laughs> 18 aggressors. When all three Redemptor Dreadnoughts get turn one. Turn killed, one. You yeah. cry. Yeah, that's what That was happen. all my points. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be, that'd be rough. That'd be pretty good. That would be Yeah, the, the competitive tournament scene is a lot more finding out the meta and trying to figure out how. And then paying money for it. Yeah. So it's a different kind of game. And that's why I'm really excited for the the kind of yeah, more yeah. beer league because like, we be can good. play i want to play an army that's fun as yeah. well because i don't i don't find super competitive armies fun it's more you have there's one way to play and you have to do everything yeah. the certain way it's not fun no for me no. so it's a cookie cutter yeah it's a different type of fun it's a different part sure. yes yeah sure. some people just enjoy that yeah. yeah playing that very surgical game but i like having my army like oh it looks a little bit more like what you think an actual yeah. army would show yeah, up. Yeah, it like. has infantry, it has tanks, yeah. it has yeah. this thing instead of just spamming things that work better in the meta. Yeah. So. Cool. You do what you do. Well, I got nothing else. Okay, let's go play. Cool. Well, thank you guys for listening to our episode on Tyranid Biomorphs. Thank you, James. Peace out. Thank you, Nathan, for your first, your debut, as you say. Um, Came out. Yeah, he came out today and oh yeah, 
finally appeared on our podcast. He's been saying he's going to do it for a long time. Out of Very all the gaming groups time. that we've had over the years, I, I enjoyed this one, I think, the most. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. It's harsh. It's in, it's, Take that, it's in, Christian. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, Christian. Christian's a part of it. He's yeah. always been a part of every variation. I like him in the garage to some degree. You no, don't like the stuff he brings into the garage. I don't care what he brings in. He just needs to take, take it, it the fuck out. out. <laughs> you know, like the stuff he leaves yeah. in the garage. No, no, but like, yeah. Sam. No, like, it's a good group we got right now. Yeah, this, new, couple, like, this is the group that I, I have been the most invested in 40K with, yeah. with because of James and Nathan. Yeah. I have never... Every model Christian leaves in the garage over two weeks, I get to take. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. Do you really want Primaris? <laughs> Yeah, yeah for when Rogel Dorn comes out, I'm doing oh Imperial Fest. I would do. I would. Yeah, there's going to be three Imperial. Fests I would buy Rogel Dorn Rogel immediately. Dorn comes out. I mean, in a heartbeat. I would green. And then I would do Black Temple on him so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Would you not? No. You filthy. I would not put a mustache. You heretic! I'd do. A, I'd do like a nice clean beard. There, that's how we we'll differentiate. So when I Rogel Dorn's yeah, fight, because yeah. they will. <laughs> well, mine, mine will. Three way Rogel Dorn. Three way Rogel Dorn. Rogel Dorn. <laughs> I think my Imperial Fist is going to be just almost all dreadnoughts. No, though. no, no. I'll bring Rogel Dorn. James, you can bring Mortarion. Uh, and I'll bring Rogel Dorn. E no. Because <laughs> <laughs> you say you can bring Magnus. Rogel Dorn. <laughs> or Rogel Dorn. We'll just have a three way Rogel. Three way Rogel. <laughs> They're clones. The Rogel Rumble. <laughs> The <laughs> that'd be a fun tournament you had to bring up primark you have to bring up primark yeah that could be kind of cool yeah just okay. because like they'd be so jank although so there Magnus would be no more terry to just like get blown <laughs> off the table turn one yeah you have like yeah. rogel dorn or whoever Reboot. well it depends Re on how many Reboot. wounds they give rogel dorn if he get if they gave him 10 wounds or higher then he's gonna die. But keep if they keep the same as Reboot Gill. Yeah. yeah. If they did the nine thing and yeah, just have him cheeky would. running around there, it'll be his... saucy like Reboot. Well, that, that makes complete sense to me. Yeah, it would make sense. They would, and they give him up a three up in bun. Oh, like the big Primarchs don't have three up in buns either. Yeah, no, they <laughs> have yeah. fours like chumps. Yeah, <laughs> my chaplain has as good a in bun as yeah. Mortarian. <laughs> <laughs> the literally the chaos champion of a god. Yeah, my no name shield captain has a better save. Yeah, than Primarch, the demon Primarch. My wraiths. Yeah, your wraiths. <laughs> <laughs> your wraith. Canoptic wraiths have a better save. Yeah. Anyways, let's end this podcast and let's go to Imaginary Wars and play some Warhammer. Yeah, that's uh, the plug for you. Retcon that name. <laughs> what? I don't think we're are we we're committing to that. Yeah. Okay. We'll I see you there. soon, Kyle. Gosh, we hope you got your name right. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna listen to this. <laughs> There's no way Kyle gets through like. 40 50 episodes oh, in God. in the time it matters he's gonna stop listening after yeah, the third no, one and then if he starts listening this to this episode regular he's people gonna don't make it through halfway this. through <laughs> and he is a regular person yeah or as close to as we know yeah that and still plays games yeah, yeah. cool well see you guys <laughs>